Episode 10. Right? Episode 10. Episode 10. Double, Double digits. digits. Let's I screamed, go. dude. Look, there's no separation. Or no, that's That Ethan. might be me. I was screaming. I was oh, belting we it out. <laughs> we were both screaming. Oh, yeah. Okay, I didn't hear you scream. Dual screen. R.I.P. Oh! headphone users. Yeah. yeah. R.I.P. Luck anyone you. in the car have their shit turned up. Surprise, bitch. Yeah. yeah. But uh, welcome back. Episode 10. Uh, all four of us are here. Ethan, Sam, myself, and oh, Cole. Yeah. What's uh, up? I'm excited for this one, What's boys. Up? We've got... Uh, science experiments on deck it's a banger of a topic that was that was what was sent in our group message i don't know if they're necessarily science experiments they're kind science of related. science related science related it feels science like a fourth grade project just titled science i brought my got our my trifold i have my trifold perfect. in my kitchen perfect. with my uh <laughs> my pictures and glue stuff. and yeah mom, utensils. mom made me a little something yeah glitter nice. and stuff you guys had science binders right a green one we talked about that before it had to be green yeah 100 percent. what what color was yours sam your it science. had to have been green yeah you're because saying that the teacher told you it had to be a green binder? No, I'm saying like if you didn't do that, you're psychotic. Yeah, uh, but that's... Uh, mine putting. was blue. It was either blue or green. <laughs> that's the thing, though. My blue is math. Anybody blue is else? math. Yeah, that's a very math color. Yeah, for sure. Green and is science. my yellow was always social studies or history. Dude, I'm right on there with right? you. That's an English color. Green was English for... Or no, no. no I green, said green was science. science. English was like fucking, I don't know, whatever was left over. Red. I don't. Even, I can't even remember what other topics there I were. Didn't, I didn't really color coordinate my binders. I don't think so. Did you I just tried that keeper? all pink binders. Yeah, all pink or <laughs> all uh, magenta. I, I did it by the year. I think third grade is when I made the switch to magenta. <laughs> is magenta the same thing as pink? No. No. no it's okay. Like a good. Purplish. Hell yeah. 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 Pink purple. Right. Magenta. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Who Something knows? Like but that. science experiments. Wow. Hell yeah. And we're gonna be. Uh, we're actually gonna release this on YouTube. We yeah, are. this yeah, is what's up to our, to our viewers on YouTube. This is recording on my phone. Now that Cole is <laughs> here, we can ac- we can execute this stuff without feeling. Now we live inside stupid. your phone and your computer. And rushed. Yeah. I know exactly. a lot of people too. Like a lot of our audience has been wanting that YouTube, the video. People like to see the visual with it. So excited it to be providing that. It's strange though. I've ha- I've heard a lot of people say like even if they don't watch it they still will pull it up on YouTube and not listen to a Does podcast. Does it make you uncomfortable that you're being recorded right now? No. Yeah, me neither. I feel fluid. I'm I feel in motion. Fluid. I'm as fast. natural as I've ever been right now. The first one we did, the very first one, is on YouTube, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which I think is kind of with like a super same, shitty quality. I think I'm wearing yeah, the same exact sweatshirt. Some dog I was wearing shit in GoPro. The first Ethan now, actually hasn't left the room or changed. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. sleeps yeah. under the table. Yeah. Now people that don't know me have a visual of my uh, my fucking the mullet. I, my mullet, which yeah. is like not a mullet, but it's something something ridiculous. It's a haircut. It's a haircut done by. Even put it that way. A bunch of dumbass. A lot of artists, dude. Yeah. The fucking Van Goghs of haircutting. Who is the Van Gogh of haircutting? My barber. Uh, Paul Mitchell, <laughs> dude. You ever <laughs> seen the Zohan? Paul Mitchell. You ever seen the Zohan? It was, have oh, you yeah. ever seen the weird, like, The they, Paul Mitchell book. <laughs> the Paul Mitchell book. The guy in Soul, that animated movie. Who's oh, the barber. shit. He's the goat of barbers. Voiced by Donnell Rawlings. We were That's talking right. about him earlier. That's right. Yeah. Soul, is that a new movie? It's a new Disney movie. Is it on or Pixar? I would say Netflix. It's on Disney Plus. Soul is the jazz one. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. But anyway, yeah. it looks really good. Yeah. Not to get no, off topic, is. but it looks really fucking. It good. is. It is really good. Check it out, dude. Think of how much experimentation Soul! that had to happen to get to that level of CG that we have today. Yeah. My my favorite soul singer is. Who's the I see skies of blue guy. <laughs> oh, Louis Armstrong. Yeah, I think we d- we talked about this on a previous pod as well. The, Maybe uh, what a wonderful world. Yeah. Guy. yeah, what a wonderful world. Shout out Madagascar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was on Madagascar. Yeah, there's a scene in Madagascar sure. where they're like in slow motion. Yeah, right? they're envisioning like uh, it's Ben Stiller and Chris Rock's characters, Marty the zebra. He's and chasing Alex him. Alex the lion. They're That's just right. chasing him. And then, uh, uh, and okay. then Alex sees Marty's face as a and it's steak. meat. Yeah, yeah. And all the okay. steaks start falling down from it's the sky. It's when he's becoming like yeah. his true. He's gonna lion eat him. Self. All of our Madagascar stands out there know what we're talking it's, about. I thought it was from Toy Story too. I'm pretty sure it's in Toy Story. That's Randy Newman. That's like 
You, you got, got a friend in me. Now we're I don't know. We're gonna break out. We're into schooling song right you now. on we soul right now. You're, you're in a corner. We've organized a flash dance of sorts where we break out into song and dance and we're gonna surprise the hell out of you. We're like the blue man group. Yeah. yeah. But better, but better. But better. Like uh what was the the show in music class we would watch where they were just it was essentially mm. a group of homeless people banging oh, stomps and pans, yeah. I think but on, a, on but a live, it, it wasn't homeless people. No, I mean, essentially, it could have been, and I would have been just as entertained. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's go with your. Version I actually of would have been science. more entertained if there's a bunch of cracked out homeless people. Oh, totally. In my alleyway, they were pretty talented. Being as that it musically was. inclined, just killing it, dude. Who yeah, knows, that's impressive. Dude. It's insane. Stomp. I don't know shit about it other than the you name. watched that in school. I remember whenever we I had a sub in music that. class, I would. That's what the fuck they go to. And I'm like, so here we are again. Didn't they make like three other stomps too? There's like, yeah, a, there's yeah, a new one coming out too this yeah. summer. That's oh like based God, on dude. stomp. Give it of. up. The sto- Give it up. Stomp the story of stomp. Like they just keep going. <laughs> stomp the making of stomp. Crackhead edition, it. dude. Yo, I remember watching in school. Bill Nye, the science guy. Oh, hell yeah. Let's fucking run it. Ethan, give me your first science experiment. First thing. First I have this. Uh, I don't know. It's definitely not the first, but um, the first do you guys ever remember making that? Like they called it oobleck in class. Yeah. It was the stuff that if you squeezed it, it was like a glue based substance. If you squeezed it, it turned to a solid. It but if you let it go, it, yeah. it would turn to a liquid and it could like roll off your hand. Yeah. That was just basically to I show the changes that. of states of matter as like, I don't know, you apply certain things to it like heat and pressure. I don't know. That's but that was like one of the most wild. Like as a kid, you're playing with oobleck. that little goo shit. You're like, damn. It kind of like looks like nut, low key. You're just playing with nut. What's in class. your nut look like? Ooh, black. <laughs> <laughs> it just stiffens up coming out. You heard it. What's here your first? cum look like, dude? <laughs> what do you guys? Well, what speaking, do you guys remember? Speaking of that, my f- I think the first one I remember is making ice cream from scratch. Oh, yeah. oh I remember that. Okay. Like, like the, the salt, salt in, the bag. in the bag. You're shaking that shit up for like hours, dude. You get <laughs> sore doing it. Yeah. That's what my cum looks like. A nice f- <laughs> half. <laughs> Half frozen. You need, you're gonna need a spoon. Kosai on wheels always hit when it Dude. would come to school. I remember having vivid moments of pure happiness when Kosai on wheels came in. Dude, Kosai's fucking legit. I love that fucking like pendulum thing that goes and it shows that how the Earth is rotating or whatever right it in is. The lobby. Like on a, yeah, axis, and it just fucking hits one domino, and then oh, it keeps yeah. going, and it eventually hits the one next to it, and it's a whole fucking circle, and eventually all the things will get But it. nobody knows it's there because they, the fucking trapeze thing that isn't scientific at all. The fucking, what's it called? Dude, it's like a, the one, I know what you're talking about, the, the zip wire one. Yeah, you ride the bike, goes, yeah, it. it's not a, it's like a unicycle weighted down thing. I never did that because I'm terrified of heights. I did it I once, was. it wasn't as in. It's like it was all right. I can't fall off. Oh, Some you of the, wanted the danger aspect of like it would have been more fun like if you could like <laughs> swing this bitch back and forth. But maybe. it was the, pretty dude. The thrill of being able to sue Kosai for falling off of their zip bike onto the pendulum, being impaled by the pendulum, and being christened <laughs> christened on the sand. For context, for any non-Columbus <laughs> listener out there, if there those even exist. Kosai is just we like have some song. Irish people that yeah, listen. The two dude, people what the in Ireland. fuck? What are you doing? There's a place called Kosai. What are you doing? By us, and they just do like what's it stand for? Columbus uh, Optometry know, Science Optometry. Institute. Columbus Observatory of Observatory Science and Information. There we go. That's Something like totally that. There's no way that's it. But that sounds 100 percent right. Enough. Yeah, it's definitely not optometry. <laughs> <laughs> unless you go get your eyes checked. But there. you see stuff. Yeah, you do see. <laughs> yeah, I'm just dude. Oh, I saw. Um, Let's see. Dude, here. they had the um, Titanic exhibit industry. there. They oh, had the yeah. iceberg, or they remade the iceberg from Titanic, and there was Shit. this huge line. And me and Quinn cut the line, and we wouldn't touch the iceberg. And our babysitter was like, "You not, you cannot do that." Where was this? this <laughs> Kosai, right? Yeah, they had this the iceberg. is the exhibit where you got a name of somebody on the Titanic, and by the end yes. of the exhibit, you found out if your person survived or not. Yeah, that was such a cool exhibit. That was awesome, dude. Yeah, but now there's, n- I can't say there's nothing there because I feel like they're, dude. Remember when it was like that? Uh, uh, 
what's the, what's the thing called when the moon and the sun uh, line up in an eclipse and they were handing out like all these fucking views. Oh, oh yeah, dude, the state uh, house was like you could the best stare at yeah, it. State house. I dude, it was packed. There I worked that day, that day at Kosai because I was oh working God. for the radio station at the time. Uh, <laughs> And I was in a tent where I was giving Wait, out the glasses. Wait, actually? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my and God. And I was working That's a tent where I was hilarious. giving out the glasses that you needed to stare at the fucking sun. Wait, for our um, radio station, or is this a different yeah. one? No, no. It was when me... Yeah, so me, Sam, and Ethan worked at what uh, a, great... a radio, a Columbus radio group. It's a radio station group. And, uh, yeah, so they sent me out there to give out those glasses you needed. And... Everybody like no one gave a fuck until there was like a minute left where it was about to happen, oh! and then everybody comes up to the tent, and I'm like fucking struggling to throw these shits out. You're the glasses plug. Did you that save day. one for yourself? Though? You. I did. I watched like the whole thing, and I was there on the steps, like the back of Kosai, if you can visualize where that is. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, it by was the, it was cool by as the fuck. River. But it did, it lasted a very short amount of time. Dude, and then people spooky just, like, feeling that day. Though. We weren't we weren't in the uh, what's the the line, like, there's a specific line that you, it's like the spot where it's, you can see it perfectly, like, over top of each other. For, oh, shit. And it's, like, pitch black. Mm. Oh, like there's, a certain part of the equator in the head. Yeah, there's or some something. path that it follows where, and there's specific You're points along this path. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck it's called. Line, of, I don't want to say line of sight, but it's something. I'll have to think. I remember about that it. shit being very underwhelming. You look up at it and it's like just kind of a foggy picture because the glasses just kind of drown out the dangerous light that just fuck up your eyes. So you don't really even get to see anything other than like a shadow on a sh- like it's <laughs> it doesn't make on any a fucking sense. piece of glasses. Like it really wow. just, it really just sucked. But you know what? Kind of cool because that shit happens naturally. And yeah. it looked like the eye, a, the eye of someone yeah. tripping on acid, pretty much, is what it looked like. Which is a massive pupil. Yeah. Massive pupil in the sky. That was probably what Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds was written about, honestly. Yeah. I would say that was very, very cool for 30 seconds. I loved it, Eclipse. dude. Eclipse. And I remember I saw this video where, like, these animals, when it happened, like a rhino, got, like, very confused what was happening. <laughs> It thought it was nighttime all of a sudden, and like these certain type of rhinos would like migrate only at night. So like, they started like migrating. They started acting all weird. They had nocturnal, yeah, night. Same thing with nocturnal animals. They thought it was nighttime, so that like actually owls makes way came more sense. out, stuff yeah. like that. So it was just animals that That's function cool. at nighttime. I don't know, fucking weird. All the monsters came out. For just yeah, thirty dude. seconds. All the, oh, all the fucking vampires came out for oh, thirty man. seconds of play. All these oh, animals that, that are would be hilarious if you were a eclipse. vampire and you got you died because of the eclipse. <laughs> you go <laughs> out too early, dude. <laughs> it teased you. You're the about nighttime. to go get your day started. You get your coffee at the the midnight tavern. You step outside and it's light again. <laughs> get ah! fucked. Yeah. Get fucked, vampire. Stupid vampire. Good luck to you. Fuck a vampire. Good riddance. Yeah. Shout out Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> Vampire Slayer. Dude. <laughs> dude. What a movie. I loved that documentary, dude. So good. The Vampire Slayer. I thought it's it was crazy how historically accurate it actually is. I know. It was like spot on. Like, yeah. The Vampire. I remember Lincoln with that. Daniel Day Lewis is like, I heard just fucking bullshit. Vampire Slayer <laughs> is like the actual true hidden history of Lincoln. The vampire Slayer. What if Daniel yeah. Day Lewis was in that movie, though? The vampire hunter. Oh, shit. He would have been a good vampire hunter. He's got the yeah. jawbone for it. <laughs> he did an all right Lincoln. I actually really liked that movie, Lincoln. Dude, Dude. I'm not going to lie. I haven't seen it. Oh, Lincoln. It's okay. I haven't seen it's it. It's totally either, okay. It's a long ass fucking movie. It's definitely like an investment. Is it a time? Just what the fuck he did? Yeah, it's based more so like during the Civil War and actually like towards the end of it. It's, it starts on a massive like Civil War battle. That it, oh, my God. This has nothing to do with science experiments at all, but like. <laughs> Wars the the type statements. of combat going down was like savage, and like it was portraying like a hand to hand combat situation where the, both armies have already like collided in the middle of the battlefield. They're just stabbing people are like each other. and stomping like they were in like a mud pit, and the people are literally just trampling each other and like stomping on people's faces because you don't have anything else to your own device. Like if you had already lost your fighting gun or for whatever your at this life, point, dude. Oh, I couldn't. I. Li- could not imagine dude i banged my knee on something at the gym the other day and i'm like fuck this really fucking hurts and then i think about somebody in a war like that getting their face stomped into the fucking puddle Holy and i'm like shit. quit being a bitch ethan somebody took a samurai sword to the stomach 800 years before you 
That's Why what you, you complaining about a think, dude? hurt knee? I thought not immediately. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this hurts. But, but fuck, imagine people have done getting and, curb stomped. Yeah, and it helps. The pain goes away. My knee didn't hurt <laughs> so much <laughs> <Good>. after. <laughs> All right. Well, before we get too far down this yeah, this uh, path, who who did we want to start first? Uh, Cole, do you want to give yeah. your uh, yeah I'll what talk, you brought to the table? I'll here talk for about the science Boris, experiments. I'll talk about Boris Morikov. We'll ask some questions along the way. Okay, so this is going to sound familiar because NASA still does this, but there is this guy in nineteen. 19- 86 <laughs> in the nice Soviet phone, Union. Idiot. Nice in the phone. Soviet Union in 1986, this guy, Boris Morikov, he's a uh, cosmonaut, which is just like a Russian astronaut, I suppose. I just want to say that dope name. Yeah, Boris. Cosmonaut. Oh, Boris. Oh, cosmonaut. Boris just is a good adds name to the too. flame right Cosmonaut. Yeah. You're a <laughs> what cosmonaut a cool named name. Boris. What was the last one? Um, His last name? Yeah. Mor- Morikov, Dude. I believe. Badass but, um, name. Boris Morikov. They wanted to test weightlessness on Earth. So what they did is they rounded up. Uh, it was unspecific. It was 10 or 11 guys. It doesn't matter how many subjects there were. But they rounded these guys up, and they offered them a car to lay in bed for 370 days, basically to study what would happen to your bone structure and the human anatomy if you're like laying down for that period of time. Did you figure out what car it was? I did not figure out what car it was because I think that's an alleged statement, but it makes the story so much better. What if, if it was just a fucking like track, like a lawnmower? Or if it was oh. like a, a like a Hot Wheels at the end of it. Pack of Pokemon cards, dude. <laughs> that would fucking suck. <laughs> but With the Charizard. Um, this guy, they were down there for 370 days, oh and God. um. Besides the medical findings, the biggest takeaway was that it ruined the relationships of all of these men. Like all of their wives were very upset with this process. One of the guys fell in love with one of the researchers. And like I told you guys, the funniest part to me is that the only person that dropped out of the experiment left three months in because he already had a car. Unreal. Dude. Wait, what is the time? This is <laughs> what? 60s? Uh, 86. 86. So this okay, is okay, actually... Okay. After Stanley Kubrick had faked the moon landing. Yeah, so of course. I'm just confused Allegedly. why like, they didn't already know what was going on with your body when you're in outer space. I know. Like, did the U.S. not find that as a priority in the space race to, like, make sure that our astronauts were chilling up there? It is, I will say, it is crazy because they, who was it? The guy who's done, like, multiple moonwalks and stuff like that. Um, Buzz Aldrin? Maybe John Glenn. I was no, not John Glenn. I think it was. It might have been Buzz Aldrin. Or you're saying the first dude who got on. No, the I'm just saying a on. guy who's been to space. Oh, or like done a bunch of missions or something. I can't. I remember I think Buzz name. Aldrin has been there a few times. Whoever this space person, another was. dope fucking name. Sick. Like your name, Buzz. Buzz Aldrin. Buzz you Lightyear. Better, you better be a fucking astronaut. That's if your Buzz name is Lightyear, Buzz baby. Aldrin. Jesus That's Christ. That's heard, a fact. I've of heard he's na- like a bitch, nature. though. Huh? I've heard he's like a bitch, though. He There's can be rumors. a bitch. He's fucking Buzz Aldrin. He faked famed a, astronaut. Faked Let him be a bitch. Again. Famed moon man. Famed actor for Stanley Kubrick. Yeah. Oh, of straight course. Straight up, dude. Who was the other guy? In, Great the stage landing? direction in that fucking um, movie. <laughs> Armstrong. Neil. Neil Armstrong. Wait, yeah. Neil. Yeah, it's, it's not Lance. Not Lance. Yeah. Lance the one ball wonder, dude. Neil. Is it Neil, Neil Armstrong? Yeah, yeah, Neil. yeah, it's Neil Armstrong. But basically, before you finish or start your story again, like they were losing... Like pounds of like bone density because they were anti grat like there was no gravity so they didn't have to use their legs or anything they just floated around. On paper, this sounds like the dopest, chillest study to ever take part in. Yo, just lay down for a year, dude. Well, dude, NASA does it still now today, and it's got to be go. way better oh. than doing it in the Soviet Union. And in actually, the 80s. being able, they probably have the technology to take certain data from the human body. Yeah, you just strap you up with some wires, and you know. Every they tell thing you, about dude. You. I can imagine this in the eighties, just like a Russian dude coming in. You lay on floor for <laughs> one year. Stay here <laughs> for. One year, you stay, you don't move. There is guard you, dog outside. You lay, you move, you Do die. Do not go out. We have gun pointed at you. We see you at 100% time. Volotov has sniper on the, through, the, through the window right on your floor. We're watching you 24-7. <laughs> 
You don't <laughs> move. It's like said? almost Jamaican, yeah. dude. I'm you are a, in the Jamaican at the I'm end. I'm a famed dialect specialist. You don't know this about Kid me? You can combine dialects into one. Into the most realistic Russian accent you've ever heard. You lay on the sure. floor now, <laughs> and I tell you when you get up, or I kill you. Dude, but the finish your story. are just like, please, no. <laughs> <laughs> My Fine, I lay down. I do it. My, I stay. My family. <laughs> <laughs> you get four potato if you do it. You do it now. The winner just won a brand new car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the a game show, like, dude. Sorry, I already have a Mazda. Fuck. You get BMW. Sorry, I already have six Fiats. I'm Russian, so. <laughs> <laughs> dude, Russian road rage. People, they don't play. When people Everybody has cars, a dash they cam. Don't, they don't play. Yeah. Everybody has a dash cam. It almost seems like those dash cams are just for entertainment at this point. Mm-hmm. It's just what happens. Because those though, fuckers don't settle shit in court. They settle <laughs> no. it with a baseball bat. The they settle it with a chainsaw. They take it in the streets. Russia that. is an insane. Going to Russia, I didn't even get to tell my Russia story in, in the last travel episode. Russia's l- lawless, dude. I say lay down the Russia story if you got something to. No, nothing contributes to it. It's just the only connection is I've gone to Russia, but there Should you I go. Talk about the dream monsters or whatever. Hell yeah, the dreamless monsters. All right, so this is kind of a parlay into this story, which uh, is not confirmed. It might be an urban legend, um, but the there is this thing called the Russian dude. sleep experiment, where in the 1940s, um, <laughs> these. POVs, or wait, uh, P- not POVs, P-O- prisoners <laughs> of war, POWs, P-O-dubs. these POWs who were in the Russian gulag, um, they were offered their freedom if they uh, went into this experiment where they didn't sleep for 30 days and they were in this chamber with uh, gases that would keep them up for 30 days. And apparently five days after the experiment started, they had all ripped their skin off. They were all like mutant, like zombies. And um, it just sounds pretty fucking terrifying, honestly. When you say mutant, like what mutated about them other than the lack of skin that they did to themselves? <laughs> I guess it's probably more mutilation, mutilation. than, mute, yeah. than mutant. Oh, when I think of mutant, I think of, well, X-Men. first I think of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I just think of a Ninja Turtle. Yeah, they but like into Ninja Turtles. <laughs> yeah, what they, you say? I would be so <laughs> sick. You just go in there and you're like, "Holy fuck, we Donatello!" Yeah, did you get the whole cast down there? <laughs> you don't sleep Splinter. for thirty Is that days. Yeah, of the rat? Yeah. Yeah. I get what you're saying though, with like yeah. the mutation, like of your fucking brain. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. They're probably, probably hallucinating. Probably after two days, I would go psycho, dude. I don't even know what I would do after two days of no sleep. Thirty? What yeah, a they, ga- uh, dude. They didn't make it to thirty. Oh, I mean, yeah. What day did the skin come off? Like four? <laughs> they said like, they did five. Didn't, they did six observe, hours like, in five. Oh, dude. Five? Imagine yeah. I'm telling yourself right now, five, five days from now, I will be without my skin. Could you even accept that? I telling Maybe. yourself right now, you'll be without. I your thought Russian. They give me a car. The <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, they yeah. give me a free car, dude. I'll fucking rip the my skin off car, right now. dude. <laughs> These two stories like should just merge into one. one yeah. It'd be way more interesting. I think it is just the same story. Telling this to like an uninterested person at a bar, and you're like, yeah, then like the Russians were in the gulag, and they were gonna give them cars, and then like <laughs> they ripped all their skin off, and then like, oh and then they laid the bed for and then Boris days. went back to space. Boris died in 2015 happened. though, so R.I.P. Boris. Boris. Boris Chechnov, or what's his name? <laughs> Mo- Boris Morikov. Don't be so Morikov. disrespectful yeah. to the You're king. Disrespecting king my Boris. favorite cosmonaut. <laughs> king <laughs> Boris. You, you got posters <laughs> of him all over your wall at home. Yeah. Do you, have, you, Boris. have you ever seen the Family Guy episode where Meg is looking in her yearbook um. for a specific person? And she goes over to this dude's house and she's like, do you have like this specific picture of the grade book? And he's like... Oh, like I might have it, and he goes back, and it's just her, her face plastered everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "Let me go through my files." Oh, and it's like all of God. these, like, and he walks back out. He's like, "Somehow I had it. I don't know how." <laughs> and he gives it to her. <laughs> but yeah, you got the Boris, the Boris shrine at home, don't you? Yeah, and ironically, it happened. The this experiment happened the exact same year as Chernobyl. Oh, what a segue! Transition. Tra- um. I feel like who hasn't heard of Chernobyl at this point? You're the people under that died rock. in Chernobyl. 
Yeah. You're living in a nuclear bunker if you haven't heard about um, Chernobyl yet. You're just living your life there. So basically, I'm going to start off with what are your guys' view of nuclear energy? <laughs> Uh, like, do you think it exists in a sense? Do you think that it could be like just a worldwide energy that everybody uses? It's used to power massive cities. Uh, but I get what you might be putting a twist on it, saying that there might be pitfalls in terms of things like Chernobyl. When things yeah. go wrong, it can be it can cause mass damage and irreversible repercussions that last decades after the fact. Mm-hmm. But I think there's a massive benefit to it because you can fucking give everybody power at a scale that wasn't wasn't possible before these things came yeah. around or the nuclear fission was used yeah. to do this shit fission or fusion whichever one it is i think that it's they fission use. yeah sounds nuclear right. fission. but i also just want to add to that like obviously chernobyl was kind of a one of a kind of mm-hmm. event and there was clearly just tons and tons of neglect on the part of the higher oh, that yeah. were running this thing yeah so it's russia dude, so, so the, the amount that the that is advanced now i think that the benefits probably outweigh the dangers Totally. Yeah, and it would have to take like the thing that happened. I think it was in Japan where it's the tsunami caused that, the. Was that the Three meltdown. Mile Island? Is that what it was? I don't know the for the name of it. Or was Three Mile Island, Pennsylvania? Dude. All right, yo. So actually, my grandpa was a part of that. He helped. Like, he helped like clean up the nuclear so, aftermath. That was in Pennsylvania, but what was? Oh, dude, I can't remember. What. It is because I was trying to remember. I was thinking I think like, it may be Three Fenway Mile Island, or, like Coney Island, but I think it is Three Mile Island. And my mom has told me that my grandpa was like one of the scientists working. Another there. great nuclear fucking fuck up, basically. My grandpa didn't cause that fuck up, just so I can. <laughs> Cole's, clear Cole's his grandpa name. was the right hand man to pushing the explode button in the power. You guys hear about keys. that uh, <laughs> nuclear meltdown where like it created a giant fucking lizard, and the lizard like lives in the fucking ocean now, and Is it's gonna a- be it's gonna be fighting like a giant monkey that they discovered on some island somewhere. <laughs> God, did you hear about this, dude? Yeah, it's, it's happening this summer. I literally like I can't believe this shit's happening in real life. It's fucking amazing. Hey, this would be the year for it to happen though. After you know all the crazy things that have been going that on. That is yeah. true. Giant lizard, giant monkey. This. I'm not. What phased. are the Vegas odds on that fucking fight? Between the Ooh. giant lizard and Saying the giant like, monkey. But Godzilla can breathe fire, can't he? So, like, where... Mm-hmm. I thought he could. Give me raw power over fire, dude. Give Honestly, me, a give monkey... Me a ch- give me a chokehold. A monkey, mm-hmm. a giant gorilla, I think, would absolutely... Fuck. I hear the giant monkey also has some battle axe now, too. All real. What? <laughs> dude, this I'm, is happening. This is going on in New York right <laughs> this now. This is yeah. happening yes. now. Buy your tickets today. I heard the home field advantage is for the gorilla because the Statue of Liberty is nearby. Yeah, that's why I was thinking hammer the giant gorilla Mm, mm. plus seven. (laughs) And that's why this leads us into our first sponsorship, SeatGeek. You can use 10%. (laughs) (laughs) You can save 10% on the Godzilla King Kong fight today. Yes, you get front row seats, the best seats in the house, the shit that isn't available to those. Type in the code dog shit to get 10% off. Or code Hudson River <laughs> to get front row tickets. Battle on the Hudson. Yeah. <laughs> and tag your pictures. And then uh, Sully comes in and lands a plane mm-hmm. in there as well, is what I heard. Just connecting Sully. things that have Sully. to do with the Hudson River. Holy shit. But Sully. that's basically like a breakdown of what happened at Chernobyl, obviously. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Now that we went off on a tangent. We totally nailed that one. We didn't talk about anything that wasn't Next. related to Chernobyl. <laughs> Good topic, Sam. So that's what happened at Chernobyl, right? Noble, right? Well, I'm done, dude. That was it. Perfect. Honestly, just such a tale of like, I don't know, just a lot of <laughs> things to learn, you know? Just morals and themes. <laughs> themes. Mm, you really dude. pulled the nuance out of that story. Yeah. But lots to learn. Basically, if you haven't seen Chernobyl on what it, we were talking HBO about, HBO, Max. right? Yes. Which you could talk a little bit about it. Just because, like, I don't know the director or anything, so you can... I just want to shout out Craig Mazin. He's one of the dopest fucking screenwriters out there right now, killing the game. There's a great podcast called Screen Notes that he's on, and I think he's writing, like, the the Last of Us film that's coming Mm. out. But that's it. That's all I would add. Wow! All I would add. But it's a very good uh, series, right? Yeah. Mini-series, yeah. It is a Mm -hmm. mini-series. If you want to literally just see the worst shit, that basically happened throughout the whole event. But um, 
essentially, if you live under a rock, like we were saying, and have no clue what the fuck this is, it is basically a nuclear, what, a nuclear power plant that the, the cell, or like the the powering part of it exploded on the inside and basically leaked radiation for just a ridiculous amount of time before they took it seriously. I think it had something to do with like the piston rods that are used in the middle of a nuclear They reactor. melted or they something. They like overheated or something broke down and it reached uh, a warning level of like, in the show they call it Z whatever. Z- num- <laughs> Z5, that's the number that's coming to me. But apparently yeah, whatever probably. it was, Z something is something that should never... Because if it hits, that basically means that everybody's fucking dead on premises yeah. without a doubt. But nothing was going on. There was no explosion. So when, when people were reporting back this level of Zed, whatever it was, it, there was a mass disbelief amongst, like what Drew said, the mishandling of these higher-ups that either one denied it because they didn't think it was possible because mm-hmm. if it was actually this thing, then we'd all be dead. And they were kind of all dead just based off of a radiation that they couldn't see or feel happening to them. And that is what they said. Too. Yeah. That's exactly what they said was that there's just no way that this mm-hmm. could happen. And the the rationale behind it was yeah. like, we're the, it didn't the leaders seem, here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Like, we lead this operation. How could that It didn't be? seem then, possible. Because obviously the people putting in the grunt work and actually monitoring this shit are like, oh, this is like looking pretty bad. And then they tell <laughs> yeah. it to the... To the guys who are running the show. No! And this ignorance, no! Yeah. This ignorance plays a role like, well, weeks after the actual... I don't know about weeks. I don't know maybe what the real time I don't, yeah, is. I don't but know the after timeline. the actual occurrence, the uh, like the meltdown and everything like that, the Russian government does this like, hey, we're going to play this down and say that it isn't something that it actually fucking is because we're the Soviet Union and we're going to control the narrative that comes out. We're supposed to be big, high and mighty. We're supposed to be the lead... Because they're battling with us in a Cold War right now. If everybody on a mass scale knew internationally that there was a massive like meltdown, meltdown that's going to yeah. be costing an entire city. What was the city? It's Kiev is the city. So that right by it. Right. Kiev is the no Pripyat is the closest Pripyat. working is the closest like working one. Which if you've ever even like heard of it, you see pictures of like a ghost town that has like a Ferris wheel. But essentially, like. Pripyat is inhabitable to live in for like 10,000 years. Uninhabitable. Un- uninhabitable. Uninhabitable. <laughs> but like these, for shit. there are these animals that live there that are like, like mutants basically going back to fucking mutants. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live in the sewers. There. Dude, that makes me think of the show when the, they uh, call on the foot soldiers of the Soviet Union to just go around and just shoot animals on site, like kill all well, the dogs, they're spreading. kill all living things. Yeah. And what was it, the one part of the series, like, the kid who never killed these animals, mm-hmm. and they were like, you're fucking done. Like, you need to go. And you're walking into a fucking kill zone of radiation, of shit that you can't even feel passing through you like a bullet's passing through you. Yeah. And they don't have any of the right provisions of, like, in terms of safety gear and shit like that. They're just and they're, they're just out in the... Like, they don't know that this shit's floating in the wind. Like, it's literally killing yeah. everybody. And then... It was that giant smoke cloud, right? Mm-hmm. It, this is what it was. It wasn't like an explosion. It was a fire happened in the middle of the thing. Because you remember what? in the show when they're looking down into the reactor and there's just a giant nuclear fire and that big yeah. Oh, it's bellowing out the top cloud. of it. Yeah. yeah, you're right now. Yes. It yeah, turned yeah. into somewhat of an explosion. Because I remember yeah. them looking down and they're like, holy fuck. Dude. Like, And the people that looked down into it, their got their faces, faces got burned. Melted, oh, melted. dude. Oh. Um... But yeah, Pripyat was like the closest working city that had like, at the time, I think close to like half a million people living there. So you could probably know that like this is within, I mean, you can see the power plant literally from the top of the building. Dude, yeah. So it's within like spitting distance and there were a group of people who watched the explosion happen from the highway like the highway closest to the explosion that you could get and they all ended up dying like within 10 days after this happened um but yeah it was pretty much anybody Crazy. that was in that area at the time of it happening is was pretty much fucked you're toast like there's literally nothing you can do and the just the willing the willingness to cover it up and say that oh. everything is fine by the government is something that's just so wild. 
I mean, it's in gnarly. Now it's well, I'll tell some facts. Let's go about Chernobyl that you guys may have heard, but some of them are just kind of fucking mind blowing. Um, the World World Health Organization estimates that thirty thousand or thirty thousand deaths can be attributed to the Chernobyl disaster, and then over seven million people have been exposed to radiation from the accident. Dude, it's like Pandora's box. Like once it started, there was no putting. I mean, you any cannot of it back. like cap it. That was the most yeah. fucked up part. And I know they went into like, it literally was the perfect, literally the perfect storm of like the wind was fucked. The night it happened, it was so windy that it ended up pushing it way too far. And then it goes into the air and then it gets in the water. And so like at that point, it's just recycling itself as this fucking bomb, essentially. But, um... Isn't it true, too, that, I mean, like you were saying before, the Russian government tried to hide this as much as possible. Those numbers, I think, come from uh, studies that were conducted by United States or countries around or that yeah. didn't support Russia. Because I know that the numbers they put out originally Words were like fucked up. They put up numbers that I think they said that, like, maybe 15 people had died. Something that was, like, it. not even close to being right. real and yeah. Then that was just obviously this, just yeah. the start of it. Just trying to cover their asses, like you were saying. Yeah, um, but going back to like how far it got carried, it says radioactive dust from the Chernobyl disaster reached across northern and western Europe and even as far as eastern United States. Mm, we got a so there are ch- traces of. We it got here. a little Chernobyl dust on us over here. That's <laughs> wild, dude, to think of sprinkle radioactive like shit coming mm. to here. Yeah, that explains people in New Jersey, dude. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that's why everybody <laughs> sucks in Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Buffalo listeners. Um, you get a pinch of radiation, you turn yeah. into this motherfucker. Hey, go back down the block. Give me a pound of radiation. Your mother's making pasta. Your mother's making <laughs> fucking meatballs like usual. God damn it! Fucking <laughs> neglecting my stomach. That's what she's doing. Anyway. Um... I don't know. There's just some weird fucking facts. Dude. They had nuclear rain in, like, far west of Ireland after this happened. Acid rain. The Which... River Monsters guy went to Chernobyl when you guys were talking about... Oh, yeah! ...fish. I think he went to Pripyat. And stuff. Yeah. I'm pretty he sure went he went to Pripyat. He went and fished for this mutant fish. Did he get it? Really? I can't remember, it? dude. Did Honestly. he wear, like, a hazmat suit and everything? Or was he... Was they just like, had a... Like he was a, just... Kind of yeah. hanging out and like they had a waiters. giga counter. I mean, they always have it. Yeah, and there was, it's like, <laughs> it's crazy, dude. When I went to Russia, I looked at going to uh, Pripyat because you can take tours. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. tours. That's right. But like, it's it said it's going to be uninhabitable for. You can walk around with that like radon meter. That that's a giga you, counter is yeah. what it is, and it tracks radon. Out. Who knows what the fuck that is? That just sounded right in my head. The radon meter, sure, that, that's what it is. I feel like that is right. I Equally, you said giga counter. It's giga. You? It's giga counter. That's is what the I name think. of the tool. Of right? the tool. Yeah, but what the, I think radon. But is radon the may be the, the measure. The, yeah, I don't fucking know. Whatever it is, arguably um, as cool as the actual story of the event is the like uh, the processes that they're taking to like entomb chernobyl itself it's like in a giant metal sarcophagus that they've been building over the dome, several years yeah they had like some dome they, sli- the they slid it. it over it on like moving wheels they had like a a what's a temporary sarcophagus and then i think just recently relatively recently they moved over the brand new fucking giant steel sarcophagus that itself is the going to sarcophagus con- that is dude that is itself going to continue to de- deteriorate on the inside because there's still shit coming out of that reactor it's non-stop it's unreal it's crazy it said i think deke i'll look something about ten thousand years though yes. um Officials say it could take up to 100 years before Chernobyl, Chernobyl is completely decommissioned. When was this article? This article is 2019. So, not in our lifetime. But yeah, to compare it, it was like 400 times more radioactive than Hiroshima. Gnarly. Disgusting. Which is, I mean, Hiroshima was kind of fucking, doesn't make any sense. How a, a bomb being dropped in. 
in like, terms of winning the war, people, dude, you saw fucking shadows on stairs and shit. Without it, any nuclear Last blast, we'll probably get out. that done. That shit was crazy. And then that arc that was like has been there through the Japanese weren't gonna quit. They had that one fucking arc that's in every picture that has literally been through Hiroshima, all the wars, and it's like never been torn down somehow. Pretty cool. Shit. We had to let them know. <laughs> they were gonna keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can uh, I can transition into something much less. <laughs> Uh, fucked up and fucked on a on a much smaller scale but still has to do with radiation so i'll try to set the story of how this starts first and i'll start by saying this uh story happened post world war ii time so there's three factors at play the united states economy is booming first of all Second of all, nuclear war had just occurred and it's a new thing for everybody and researchers want to know what effects nuclear war have on people and what radiation, like how radiation affects people's bodies and stuff like that. Uh-oh. And I lost my train of thought on the third one. But base but those two factors kind of kind of set the tale for the story here. So um Quaker Oats is a cereal company, and with the old Amish li- or the uh, the What's Quaker it? looking guy. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, is that a Quaker, style? Yeah. No, that's Quaker. a that's a from Pennsylvania. The Quakers yeah, they were a religious uh, group of I think pri- based in ca- not Catholic but Christianity. They had the, the uh, brims, very, uh, the Nike hat with the yeah, full. But they brim. had uh, different beliefs than. I don't know what it was specifically. Yeah. Whatever yeah. it was, but in the dude with the old guy he looks like a pilgrim. Kind of looks like. Totally. Uh, the Chewy Bars ben are great. Ben Franklin kind of yeah, looks dude. like a Thanksgiving dude. Yeah, pretty much. Whatever he is. Quaker guy. Yeah. But uh, they were competing with Cream of Wheat at the time, which was another cereal company. And their whole slogan was, uh, the nutrients basically are so rich, they're going to like fill your entire body. So Quaker wanted to find a way to basically match that slogan and back it up scientifically. So they partner with this uh, committee, and it's called the AEC. It's like Atomic Something Committee. And they partner with MIT to do this research to put radioactive substances in uh, children's cereal. They picked this school called the Fernald State School, and it's a school for uh, orphans and the mentally disabled. Perfect. Formally called Perfect. the Massachusetts School of the Feeble-Minded. Oh, my that God. That is what it used to be called before they changed it, which is just fucked. Like the nut house, but, essentially. Yeah. Um, Jesus Christ. So they, all of those entities partnered together to uh, conduct this study where they put radioactive substances in these kids' cereal and uh, calcium-induced iron or some some other thing like that. Did it come in the form of, like, a marshmallow in Lucky Charms? Like, that, your Dude, radioactive yeah. marshmallow? It's, it's like... <laughs> I, well, eat all those, I eat all the radioactive yeah. marshmallows first. If you first. think of it like Quaker Oats, <laughs> apparently it's supposed to be within the oats. And, and the oats apparently, like, had some other chemical that didn't, uh, didn't, like, process iron in your body correctly, so they were trying to prove it otherwise. That's just like a side. And I guess we were fact. trying to describe like what they were trying to like, why they thought this was a good idea. And I guess the only thing we came up was like, they thought that this radiation would legit carry it to your fucking whole body. Yeah. It well, wouldn't stop. Like it would only, it would literally inf- infect your whole body. Well, it was like, radiation. it was like calcium induced radiation. So the idea was that calcium would uh, would like quickly make its way into your bones. A more efficient way to get yeah, calcium, sure. essentially. So the, and, and the fucked thing, though, is that it, all of that is just trying to make them have an excuse oh, to yeah. have the slogan <laughs> that the nutrients can make its way to every part of your body. Like, that's the whole point of it. Sounds For good. Quaker. But on the other side of it, the Atomic Committee... Their whole goal is to see the effects of like mm. the radioactive substances within people's bodies. Now the Atomic Committee. <laughs> it just sound, I was about to. It sounds so funny. What Atomic Committee? 
Like yeah, who the a, fuck is on okay, this there's committee? There's an E in the middle. I can't remember what the acronym is, but I know I know it's AEC. It's Atomic Something Committee. <laughs> it just sounds but so. Just it that. just sounds like a funny name. It reminds me of the Crash Bandicoot dude, Atomic guy with the big A on his head. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he's just sitting at the table. <laughs> he's on. The, he's the head of. The <laughs> he's committee. the head of the committee. <laughs> to break it down in saying. my head, I just wanted to ask you a question because yeah. so. The, there's the two parts. There's the actual like Quaker Oats company, like mm-hmm. wanting to sell this new like slogan, like marketing this new brand right. new cereal. Because they're hey. competing with cream of wheat, exactly. which is and their slogan was the same as like nutrients mm-hmm. will spread to your whole body. Totally. So they're in the middle of a uh, commercial, like almost capitalistic war in terms exactly. of selling cereal. Whereas the Atomic Committee, they are just kind of using Quaker as a pawn to get data back for yes. their shit. They don't even give a fuck how many boxes of the cereal sells. Yes. So it's, yeah, it's and, test it. And now I, okay. I remember what the my... unethicalness of this entire fucking thing. And I was going to say, I remember my, my third factor from before, which was Location. that after the war, after World War II, the U.S. was just literally on top of the world. They were the... Oh, yeah. In the eyes of everybody, we were the number one country. And probably part of public opinion was that we could do nothing wrong. And that's why ethics in this time when research was kind of popping off, like slid under the rug because in the public eye, the U S there could be no wrongdoing because we had just won the war. Mm -hmm. We're just on top of shit. Uh, Oh yeah. I mean, show you how far we fucking come with that. But like, it goes back to the third factor about it is that like people would let this kind of research slide under the rug all the time. It goes to Russia. Same thing. It's just the higher official, Whoever's right. at the head is just fucking saying, ah, everything's going well. Mm-hmm. We're at a point in this time in our history that we want to prove that we are the best country. We're a massive superpower exactly. and we're the innovators of every type of study, whether it be like physical, biological, technological, space, literature, right. science, all, everything. Breakfast we want to show cereal. That, all the way to breakfast. our fucking breakfast cereal, dude, for real. Yeah. That we were the best and like you got to. There's shortcuts taken yeah. there, I guess. I think yeah. we just let it get to, to our head. It. Like, we got too cocky. Totally. Like, we were literally just like, yeah, we can do no wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, if we want to poison mentally ill children, then that's exactly what we're going to do. Because exactly. Crazy. USA, straight yeah. up. Yeah, and I will say, because, like, I bet <laughs> straight the up. main thing that people are probably wondering is, like, the effects that it had on the kids. But the amount that they used was very, very small. It turned out it was 170 to 330 millirems. You said the, this before. Yeah, whatever no the clue. fuck that means. But uh, they tried to make it an amount that would never like affect their chances of getting cancer or whatever else radiation could do to you. Um, but either way, the fact that they had no, the kids had no consent. There was no parents involved. Af- like obviously, because they were orphans, orphans yeah. and that's the fucked part about it is the is the consent, and there's no consent. Now is it? I guess the only people that could have given consent were the people that were in charge of this orphanage. Did they? Well, they... Okay, so imagine Quaker Oats, oh. MIT, and the Atomic okay, yeah. whatever committee and is here's coming a bag. to your yeah. fucking school. Here's yeah. a bag. We're gonna yeah. Let us do whatever the fuck we want. Yeah. And it's in the Damn, 1940s. Dude. No one gives Capitalism, a fuck. baby. No one's checking each other. So... Um, but, but this actually got found out 40 years later... When like a lawsuit came out and a bunch of uh, the Atomic Committee's uh, documents had gotten declassified, and a bunch of the kids from that school had like gotten in on the lawsuit, and I think it was like a two million dollar settlement, something like that. Doesn't seem like shit. You said the so, lawsuit took place in nineteen ninety. It was like nineteen ninety four. Well after the events that forty years took place. later. It's crazy. Now, do you know the like? I know you said it was very little. There was no really effects on the. That's what they argued in court, but it was uh. So apparently, the average person has about a one in two thousand chance of getting cancer, and Scary. and I guess this. Uh, That's fucked. Yeah. So, That's, but yeah. but this that is odd. so. Really that know, is very I when very I read specific. That, I was like, Holy fuck! All right, but, um, get your balls checked. But I guess checked. this study like barely affected that number. It was probably like one in nine nineteen hundred. Just something. Oh yeah. Okay. But. But yeah, that's just besides the point because it's, a, it's literally about the fact that they had no idea. I'm also curious, like what their children, were their children affected by it in any way, say, shape, or form? I think that is a part of the lawsuit. I didn't read too far into it, but I think that yeah. there were a, a lot of children that were affected. How do you, I've always wondered on a lawsuit, how do you put a price on something like that? How do you mm-hmm. say $2 million that will make me feel better? Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. But here, to and determine here, a price on 
pain, suffering, to put money on anything. Almost like essentially that, really. could be ruining your bloodline yeah. if your children were affected by this. Mm-hmm. And there was even like an argument made by the committee that the research helped them with uh, stu- later studies in osteoporosis because it did actually prove that. that the calcium <laughs> like was uh, was absorbed in their bones faster because of the study. And that later Shit. helped, like, so kind of, studies of osteoporosis. So there's kind of, like, a silver lining. But that's a, a little fucked up way of looking at it. I guess Consensus, something... Consensus, good study, bad study? Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect answer. Yeah, sure, bad yeah, study. Dude, yeah. I, mean, I can't really decide Consensus, either. Consensus study, good study, bad study. I would say bad. But bad something study. good, at least, I guess, came out of it. Sure. I get. Yeah, maybe. This was this was actually one of the studies along with uh, the Tuskegee study, which like helped start the whole like ethics conversation in research. I remember. The I Tuskegee remember that. The Tuskegee study school. is is the one where, um, I think we told there was like six uh, six hundred African Americans that had syphilis, and we gave them placebos yeah. to see how they would uh, react, and we and we just watched by as they died pretty much okay yeah that's coming back that's a whole nother uh, fucking that's, topic yeah, that's a whole different thing but well yeah, fuck dude. quaker oats quaker oats quaker oats they were just trying to get their bread dude yeah essentially literally literally they're literally dude. trying to make trying to get their oats yeah. <laughs> wheat <laughs> they're hauling oats dude, to the bank I guess we, yeah, dude, it's pretty fucked up that Hall and Oates would like poison children or whatever. <laughs> That's my favorite That's my takeaway. That's my favorite duo. Don't talk shit about Hall and Oates, dude. Top five favorite songs. Yeah, Hall and Oates say, songs. Oh, you're a big Hall and Oates guy. Name every Hall and Oates song ever. <laughs> what was the uh, fuck? It was <sighs> the Hall and Oates song. Yeah, just yeah. Name you know that one Hall and Oates song. Oh, I have no fucking clue. If you played five of them, I probably would be like, oh, yeah, that one. I, all I know is one. It's like. Is it like you make my dreams come true? Ooh, is that Hall Notes? I don't know. I have no clue. I don't know a single Hall Notes song. I was just seeing if he knew. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I just know the name. And so fuck Quaker Oats. Quaker Oats. I guess we can transition to my. Uh, I have a list of a few different uh, experiments that I just uh, I've been interested in over the years, and maybe experience more so like expeditions, whatever. Uh, some have gone wrong. Some have, like Drew was explaining, a silver lining to some of them. Who knows? But in the vein of radiation, there was this doctor named Bruce Banner, and he suffered a massive... Not amount, Batman. Ma- Bruce, uh, Bruce Banner. Isn't and that, he suffered a, a massive amount of gamma radiation, and that caused <laughs> That's him... That's not Batman's name. No, yeah. Bruce Banner is from... I don't know. It's from Batman. It's a name from the Batman. The bit is now kind of suffering, but uh, I was going <laughs> to say Bruce I'm Banner. Uh, <laughs> Bruce Banner got... Popped by some gamma, gamma radiation, and he now suffers from a condition <laughs> oh. that, like, whenever he becomes angry, he turns into this massive <laughs> green <laughs> monster. And so oh, now so it's kind of a case study on, like, uh, human emotion, and we look to him in ways that we can control our own anger ourselves so we, that we don't become a giant, massive green monster that fights supervillains and shit like that. Dude, but I my ne- my next my next uh, uh. S- experiment that I definitely do want to bring up with there's a company called Oscorp and they were working with radioactive spiders, and one of these things trickled down its spider web and bit one of the just like a regular ass kid named Peter Parker, in uh, New York everybody knows New York you get bit by the spider but this radioactive <laughs> power caused him not quite like the uh, Bruce Banner situation that caused him to be like a giant green hulking human <laughs> right, hulking. Right. but this spider bit peter parker and he now is able to like spit fucking spider webs out of his fucking wrists and stick <laughs> and stick to walls and shit and jump really far and like just beat the fuck out of people 10 times his strength yeah um, i think i've heard of that it was honestly a huge blunder that's a massive massive uh, blunder but in like a silver lining we get one of our generation's greatest protectors and vigilantes of all time. The vigilante, dude. Uh, is Spider-Man a vigilante, though, straight up? Uh, I think vigilanteism is defined as, like, somebody who isn't a true authority that, like, puts on a mask and decides to... So it's like, like every superhero is kind of a vigilante. vigilante. Mm. They start off as a vigilante. Yeah, and then they become more established, sure. But, but like, those are two real-life experiments. Real life. Obviously... Um, well documented too. Let me get to a real thing. 
Uh, I wanted to bring up Dr. Kevorkian, also known as Dr. Death, somebody who uh, is shrouded in controversy. Um, he was the doctor who was big on assisted suicide or euthanasia for patients that were like pretty much already on their deathbed that would say, hey, I'd, I'd rather just die than continue living like this, so let me go to you and you can kill me peacefully. And um, it sparked up a debate whether or not that's something that's ethical or not. Uh, this dude was tried for murder multiple times. I think he was eventually com uh, convicted of it. Um, I want to say in the 90s. Went to jail for it and did his time. Uh, came out and I believe a part of his parole was that he can never speak of like his uh, prior practice of doing that ever again. Um, really? Promote any of this type of... Uh, I forget what the technical term is. I keep thinking euthanasia or like assisted suicide or whatever it actually be was. Assisted suicide. Um, but yeah, he couldn't speak of it anymore. And he ended up dying in 2011. But ultimately, I just want to bring that up to see where you guys fall on that ethical debate. Do you think that's something that people should be allowed to discern themselves in their old age? Like, hey, I just want to die now. I just, I'll go to a doctor and they'll do it uh, peacefully and or like ethically. Or do you see it as unethical where some of these people that are on their deathbed might not be in the right frame of mind to make that decision for themselves. I personally think that those people have the right to make that decision. Yeah, 100%. I think if the argument the other way is that they might not be mentally sound enough to make that decision, uh, I guess my response would be like, what frame of mind would you have to be in any way to know that you want to die? Mm. You know, Or to know that at least I want to go in a way that like I have somewhat of a control of. So yeah, it's like, I it, think yeah. that they have that right completely. It would personally. be, it would be hard to tell somebody that they can't make that decision. Yeah. In whatever state of mind, I think it'd be hard for somebody to be like, no, like you're, you're not allowed to, cause like at the end of the day, and I guess that's what everybody's pushing towards is, Everybody makes their own decision if you do what you want with your own body. So that trickles down to. And what's interesting about the whole thing, uh, the the lawsuit that actually ended up convicting him. Well, this is actually might be a stupid statement because, of course, it's the family that has to file the lawsuit because the patient at hand, the victim at hand is dead. So it's not like they can file any lawsuit. It'd so be their family. Yeah. It's interesting that the family can make that decision for a human being that they weren't in the mind of themselves. They can be like, oh, he wasn't able to make that decision yeah. for himself. And I apologize. I'm not completely an expert on this entire thing. I'm sure that the argument against it is more more than just the frame of mindset argument against it. But um, to, me, to me, I just don't think you can put yourself, as Drew was saying as well, that you can't put yourself in the mindset of anybody else. Like it's almost impossible to determine that. So... You kind of just got to trust what each human wants to do. And if they go into it willingly and sign a paper saying, yo, fucking peace me out, I'm all for it, mm -hmm. to be honest. Do you. That's what I am. Do you. I have a philosophical question for Propose about this. Let's go. Because I can't decide either way which side I believe in. I see merits to both of them. Totally. But this is kind of an argument between free will versus destiny. Like, if you're allowing somebody to assisted suicide themselves are you kind of like cheating whatever like the natural order of things are occurring with how people should die or is that the fact that they chose mm -hmm. to assisted suicide themselves the way that they were always intended to go rather than letting natural causes take you out or just yeah whatever happens but my question would be like to to that point my question would be why can't that state of mind or him asking that be his free will like why can that not be what is meant to happen well that's what I w that was the question that I was posing yeah no I, but i'm saying like that's my i guess my argument against the question of like oh but like why not let them live out their life in the way that wouldn't be with assisted suicide or if they die of natural causes or they die of whatever else it's like if they choose to make that decision, is that not still free will? As yeah, opposed to as, as, as opposed destiny to destiny too, at the though. exact same time. Well, it depends what you believe on free think, will or destiny. Think about applying that same question you just asked, not with this assisted suicide scenario, but apply it to just going to the hospital and prolonging your own death with just 
regular health care. Like, oh, I'm sick. I'm dying. I'm going to prolong life, whatever naturally was going to occur anyway, and make my life maybe last longer than what natural course of things would have taken me that way. So I think if you look at it in that site, um, humans are always using and making decisions to alter what could actually naturally happen, no it, matter what. It would essentially be, do you, you, we have the tools to either solve it. It's like the thing I'm thinking of is like chemotherapy. Mm-hmm. Somebody may be like, fuck it. I don't want to go through this shit because one, it's going to make me just as sick as I am now and two may not even fucking work. The breaking bad scenario. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the, do I just say fuck it and like just end it now? Or do I try to work through this and still come to the same conclusion of, I just wanted to end now. I just kind of put it off. And we had a big discussion about it yesterday with COVID and how, I mean, you gave up the stat of like in California, the suicide hotline rates are just fucking spiked Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ever since this shit. And we talked about how COVID maybe for these people that were already mentally ill and mentally depressed that were probably going to get to this point. But COVID and being by themselves just sped up the process. And at the end of the day, I think this assisted suicide is just speeding up the process of what the fuck was already going to happen. Totally. And I but in a it, different maybe. fashion in which it's ultimately the result is different than what would have naturally happened. And you yeah, were killed and by something thing, else yeah. other than... And but I see your you point, can think totally. of is hope. Like the only thing that people are grasping onto is... I hope that it would have worked out, but at the end of the day, it's this person's decision. If they really don't think it's going to work out, then it's an interesting fucking debate. Yeah. And also I just want to go back to what you prompted Cole, just to like go against my own point. Like I still hold that view that I think they should be able to have that decision, but I guess a counter argument to myself would be maybe they're, maybe it's just like they're having a bad day. Like it could Mm. be if that in the moment they're having like one of those days where they do want to end it. And then the next day they wake up and they're like, I'm feeling better. Exactly. And I will say that's, and that is a a huge, a certain experience, an experience, uh, a moment, somebody that you meet that added day of life could change your entire outlook on everything. One day you could be just ready to fucking die. Like you said, but who knows what, if you decide to add an extra day, Things, the trajectory of things can go astronomically a totally different direction. And you hear those stories all the yeah. time of people who are ready to die in any situation, not just old people who are like asking for it. It's mm-hmm. just every, your everyday person. And then something comes along, like, and it could be fate or whatever it is that just changes the direction of their life completely. I it's, think in this scenario, though, like the assisted suicide thing isn't just for like a regular civilian. Like you couldn't just go and assist no, suicide no. yourself. It's like it would have to be very specific. Yeah, it situation. had to be a cancer this situation. In the hospital. Yeah, like yeah. If you're going yeah. through. If you're like in excruciating pain and like you basically like there is no more joy in life because like your body is like like dying. You are down, dying. Like going against you. Then yeah, I get yeah. that. But otherwise, not it's stopping like, you at that point. Do just what you because someone do. is bummed out and like they're old and like they're see, I don't know, dude. I can't like. But at that point, they can just do it by themselves. Mindset yeah. about I it. guess when the question was first posed, I was thinking about that old person who maybe knew they were going to die and was just like, maybe I want to have some control over it. But there's just like so many different situations. Yeah, it's definitely. Like, um, it's an interesting conversation, though. Because yeah, it's a good debate. It's there, challenging to tackle. There's no it line. Because, I mean, like, everybody's going to have a different opinion of, like, where do you draw the line of it being fucked up where this person is having a bad day and is being very impulsive and they're just like, okay, sure. And they just, and then that's it. But then there is, like, a very, I don't want to say, like, a beautiful aspect to it where this person person is able to choose their time rather than waiting for it and having this anxiety and like basically struggling through life for their end time when they could just be like, okay, this is like, I know I'm dying. I know I'm going through this shit, but I want to pick my time. And I think there was some, 
there's some story I'll have to fucking think about it or look it up, but of this doctor who would like give out these types of like drugs when and they would he would give it to these people and he's like when you think you're ready like do it and it's almost like a cyanide capsule and, and he just gave it to them and to he'd have give it to him to own. have and he'd be like you're dying you're doing this stuff but like when you can't deal with it anymore just fucking do this and you're it's you're done see that's way more unethical to me than it is like an a doctor assisted situation 100%. you're just kicking a dude out the door with some pills that could kill you and literally anybody else that and gets i may be completely them. fabricating this but i'm pretty sure it's like one mm. like there's no option outside of like you have this one pill that could potentially you can do whatever you want with it but yeah if it falls into the wrong hands then totally that's where the fucking gray area is of my fucking nine-year-old kid yeah, took cr- my pill and yeah. ended up fucking dying. And that, like, if a doctor says that to you, it just could be further validation to you to do it. To do it, Rather exactly. than think finding about the it. other option or yeah. thinking of something else. But at the end of the day, it is just a tool. It's a tool to give you an option of making it easier on yourself, which I think is what everybody looks for. I just really like the uh, for to sum up this whole conversation about the experiment. I really like the point is like that death is so final. Like once you're gone, you're gone. But if you're here an extra day, who knows what you could have came across? There could, a whole fucking cure for whatever disease you had in this very specific situation could have been created that next day or whatever it is. Yeah. But if we were to generally apply it to suicide and stuff like that, if you're around an extra day, who knows? But, like, ultimately, man, I can't put myself in anybody else's mind. I don't want to make or pass any type of judgment on anybody to make decision on making decisions like that, ultimately. Um, it's a do yeah. you situation. Yep. Check on your friends at all times. Yeah, that's Shit's what I was about to say on a yeah. very serious note. Yeah. Reach out to people. Mental health is not times. a fucking joke. I feel like everybody, I hope everybody fucking knows that. Mm-hmm. There are some ignorant people out there that do think it is just. Oh, you're you're just having a bad day. It's becoming less and less of a stigma, which is a good thing. I think yeah, we're working it's being towards. more and more talked about and more and more open. Like we're talking about it here. This would not have fucking happened. Yeah, dude. Shout think, out to Kevin Love. Oh, you stole my <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> Love is our champion. Dude. Yeah, yeah, dude. It, I mean, it's just so normalized. I had like to think it's normalized now in the sense. Shout somebody, out to Ross Boland. Somebody too. could talk about that shit and. It's just a normal conversation. For sure. Hey, man, that's just talk and shop with the homies. Mm. Mental health is on the docket every we day. Should have, yeah. I talked yeah. about every, a mental health every single day, episode. Dude. I talked about a mental health episode. Yeah, I think man. it would be good. Uh, to the next uh, experiment that I wanted to bring up uh, that has uh, controversy surrounding it and sparks a debate is the Stanford Prison Experiment. Um, some of you may know if you took an, uh, like a psychology class at any point in life there's a like a a series of videos hosted by this dude named philip zimbardo and he has like one of the strangest sounding voices of all time (laughs) and um he would introduce several psychology concepts he's a famed person but he caught a lot of heat for this experiment that he did in 1971 um where he basically just reconstructed a prison scenario for students assigned everybody roles as either guards or the the um the prisoners he himself assigned himself as like the mm. the warden of the prison as well Holy shit. and it really was a study to back. show like uh just um being labeled as something what that does to you uh situationally like can your situation impact the way that you act as a human can your status in society or whatever hierarchy you exist in completely change the way you act as a human where these people are just students and you find people that were assigned the guard uh, positions becoming brutal and very physical with the uh, the with prisoners. the god mindset exactly like yeah. th- them being just anointed this idea that they are this the, and um, it's a part of a simulation they can take it so far which and it goes into this idea of like not necessarily brainwashing but when you're told and that you have all this power and that you can control all these people it, you can't help but have it go to your head basically and use it to your advantage because as humans we're all internally. I think selfish at the end of the day. 
Was there a so, movie on this? There is. There was a movie. Okay, I, haven't I seen thought the I movie. was going fucking crazy no, because I remember really watching movie. this. I got to check it out. I haven't seen it's it. It's really yet. fucking good. Mm -hmm. I believe the dude from Sky High is in it. The main character. Do you guys remember the movie Sky With High? With the Sky Frosted High. Tips? Not Frosted Tips. Like the main character, like brown hair. His dad was Kurt Russell. Oh, dude, I was thinking yeah, about. Kurt Russell yeah. is like the main superhero. But that dude, Sky I believe, High. is in the movie. That's yes. just a tangent. Doesn't fucking matter at all. Continue. But yes, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. believe. You guys uh, yeah. like the movie? I'm, I it's, it's an insane movie. movie, and I think the concept is really fucking cool. I think, it, I mean, it's a complete, it's a non-fiction ass, like, sticks to the, yeah. the skin and bones of what actually happened. Which it was is very like, I love brutal. Those kind of movies mm -hmm. where they don't, like... I remember being brutal. You know? Am I wrong? Oh, like, yeah. Like, it was very, like, oh, sure it's, it's, on par to what the fuck was like going on in this thing. fascinating, dude. And this dude, like, it happened in 1971, and then, like, I think... It was years later that he got caught flack for it, that the shit was handled very unethically just to, I think, get to a conclusion of something that we kind of already knew as humans. Well, that, yeah, like, if like, you tell somebody you're this, they become that. It's crazy to think that people got mad at the fact somebody basically just conduct an experiment of what the fuck's actually going on, mm. but putting more of a spotlight on it. I don't know. Dude, we're all I the think, same people. I think, uh Potentially, it could have been more over exaggerated. Oh, <laughs> more over exaggerated than even like a real prison. You yeah, it I was mean? very well because like, there were no laws. There was no like. Yeah, well, there's laws. They they set they, up an entire yeah, prison system of thing. laws. Like you could not break start them. I do. Okay, the, I do remember the that now. Officers or the prison guards were never s supposed to hit the people or start abusing them in any way, but. Zimbardo, the guy who was overlooking the whole study, saw what was going on, and he let, was fucking fascinated. Let by it go. It. So he was like, Fuck how it. far let's, can this let's go? Let's see how this goes. Because it is. It's so. It's so unethical, but so goddamn fascinating. Like yeah. the fact that this existed. I'm happy that it existed. Obviously, I'm not happy with like whatever type of mental problems that people trauma. exact that yeah. people left with. But I'm. It's just so fascinating what we learned and by just letting things go like, fuck, we got to let this ride. I wonder if there was an inkling in Zimbardo's mind is like, fuck, I will catch flack for this, but I'm going to do it anyway because this is going, this is something that it informs almost every w thing that you do in life. The, what you're told you are in life is what you manifest in your day to day. Like that's how you carry out yourself. If you're told that you're a scum. And if you're told that you're a piece of shit, then you're going to think you're a fucking piece was of shit. Was the original fi experiment filmed? It was. Uh, I don't, yeah, I'm I was not sure if those original sure I, Yeah, I don't think like it's public. ever been released. I'm not, not sure if sure. it's public or not, but I know that it definitely was filmed. Interesting. Um, this is also yeah, just dude. making me think about um, the Marines or like when we were in Afghanistan, like they were like treating like the uh, prisoners of war like shit. Remember they made them do like the, like they were like stood in like a... Uh, a cheerleader like triangle or something and then they make them like do that, um, that what what, what era, era? they used to know, do weird during, shit for like, the prison. iraq war but i, I do know that interrogating Viet vietnam was like the the poster child of the atrocities of american soldiers and it was rapings land. like pillaging like fucking shit. bro in america we're number one yeah. Boo, boo, boo. But, but talk about power tripping, though. Like, if yeah. I could yeah. put one label on the entire fucking uh, uh, experiment from just what was happening with the guards and how they uh, uh, interacted with the actual prisoners and Zimbardo himself to a point, just power tripping. You well, that's can, what all these that's situations have the been. entire yeah. fucking thing. You just fucking power tripping. But you know what? Mm -hmm. Sometimes people power tripping is the most fascinating history there ever is. And I think that's what he knew, too. I mean, I'm not going to like speak from Zimbardo's heart, but I mm -hmm. think he saw what was going on very quickly and he was like, I got to let, let's yeah, like let you said, ride. you got to let it ride for science, dude. Mm -hmm. Let let's it ride for, this shit for science. Like, I'll take all the smoke. And I'll he's take, still around. He's still yeah. faint. Like he made those videos. We were watching him in our class. It's not like he got canceled or anything like that. I was like going to say, dude, he's still chilling in our AP psychology books all around America. Mm -hmm. Was it and only men in this experiment? Right now, exactly. I think so. Right? It was only men. It was only men in this, right? In the yeah, experiment. It was, I think. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. In the movie, I think hmm. there was girls though. Because I don't think so. I don't. Th that's what I'm trying to remember. I don't there's know if not, there were any. I can look it up real movie. quick. I looked up some of the actors, and I mean, there's dude, a girl. It's the dude from it's Sky Zimbardo. They've, they've got a murderer's it's, row of it's people. It's Zimbardo's you recognize. girlfriend. 
Zimbardo's yeah. girlfriend is one yeah. of the main characters. She is always because she's the one, and who knows if this is based on uh, the actual story, but she's always coming in and to like see what's going on in the experiment too. And she's like, "This is fucking ridiculous. Like, you need to stop yeah. doing this shit." And he's like, "Nah, dude. I think he's the like, guy no that way. plays." How do you say his name? Zimbardo? Yeah, Philip Zimbardo. I think the guy that plays Zimbardo in the movie is the guy that plays Russell in Almost Famous. It was Let me um, show me It was just males for the record. I wanted to throw yeah. that out there. Yeah. Wait, Interesting, so you, dude. When you looked up the cast, you saw Moises. Oh. Yeah, we saw Rico from Hannah Montana. <laughs> Unreal. There's Thomas Mann from Project X. Wait, what? And then there's the guy that plays Cousin Greg. So I might be mi- I might be mistaking <laughs> Thomas Mann from Project X with, with the kid from Sky High. Because if I can remember what the yes! kid from Project right. X looks like, he looks what? like yes, that kid from right. Sky High. The, you're guy, 100% right. the kid that plays Cousin Greg oh. in Secession was in Sky High. He was the dude that... His power was glowing in the dark. Oh, the oh. most useless power. <laughs> That's hilarious. Shit, but yeah, dude, I'm checking in, that movie out for sure. It is interesting when you give somebody a title of power, how different their mindset actually changes. And I think the Stanford Prison Experiment, you said it was 72? 71. 71. 71. That was also on the tail end of when ethics started to get mm-hmm. put into place in, psych- in research and in psychology research I to guess. reference psychology class again another one that we learned about that uh, another experiment that we learned about that took place before 1971 so before this like uh thing of ethics being on the forefront was the shocking person experiment oh, where, yeah, like, yeah. you do the test you take the test and you make somebody believe that they're shocking this person behind the window when they're really not it's just a recording it's, and yeah. you had to keep upping the the pain for the shocks each time and how far people were willing to be the the greater of that test on the person on the other they, side and shock these I people. I remember reading this. This was a li- I think I literally read this yesterday. It was like everybody reached the maximum amount. Yeah, and they Dude. told him it was deadly too. They'd be like, when you reach yeah. this point, like it can it can, can kill cause. you. And then like somebody like faked like a heart condition or something, and mm. they still did it. Dude, it, it, oh, the fucking no! audio the audio of the person on the other side is ringing in my ears. Right, it's it's get like, me out of here! Ow. Get me out of here! Get me out of here! Please, ow! Please, God, no! <laughs> get me out of here! Get me out of here. Isn't okay, isn't there an actual is the video from that real or I cuz I remember seeing a video I believe of that, it is but real. I, but that's the black an authentic, and white. actual I think so. I don't yeah. know if I've ever Could seen it. be wrong, but I think, I think it, is it is real footage. I think it is too. I think I remember seeing that senior year of high school we were doing And that's yeah, just exactly. another fascinating thing. It's very basic, but it 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 tests that human level or like that switch that we can all just fucking mm. flip and be like shit like i'm being told to do this like an authority is telling me to do this right now mm. that i need to carry out this thing i'm just gonna keep shocking the dude which okay. leads us Great. to fuck the police i think that's what you were about to say fuck right the police no, i was not gonna say <laughs> I'm yeah. coming straight from the underground <laughs> no, fuck authority right. fuck the police i was actually Stick it to the man i was gonna bring up another ap psych thing and i don't want to sound really ignorant on this so hopefully one of you can kind of remember what i'm thinking about but there was a study with a bunch of kids and I think they were all in the same school and they were given the idea that they were put into teams or something. And they were given the idea that this one team was like almighty and powerful. And they ended up bullying. Like it was the blue group. eye kids versus the other yeah, colored eye kids. Right. And they were told that blue eye kids um, uh, are in, are su- That's in right. superior, superior, inferior. And everybody oh, who is inferior. In, I don't know whether it was the blue eyed people that were more superior or less superior, but they, they created this, uh, class system based off of a physical attribute and they basically i think it was a brilliant experiment it teaches these kids like to judge somebody based off of a physical attribute is something that is wrong through and mm-hmm. through and that which, can be applied to all things which that's is now that, which yeah. is something yeah. that kids i feel like do anyway yeah because if you don't know like if your parents aren't teaching you enough or, or you're just you're fucking six years old you don't know shit anyway yeah. so i uh, yeah i mean that's just another experience i remember learning about and uh, it's like as a kid, though, I don't think you necessarily look at somebody's physical appearance appearance when to be like their friend or be attracted to them in any sense, just because yeah, maybe, you're yeah. not yet maybe. like polluted to True. this concept of like beautiful people or but you top are class. you are I think aware of it. You are in a sense, but at that point in time, I don't think I was never in my head as a kid like that's a hot ass little girl. You don't conceptualize like that, but yeah. there's been studies done that show that like babies are like more partial to attractive individuals. Really? 
Yeah. That's wow. interesting. That's actually crazy. I don't think that like what you're saying is right though. You're not like cognitively being like judging somebody. I like this person of, because yeah. they are pretty. Or they have this amount of money. Like you're just looking at this person as but like, that, do I like this? All the more reason for them to carry out this experiment at a young age and teach these exactly. kids that lesson because yeah. that's something that you get conditioned. Good experiment. To. What you were saying about it being like a cognitive thing, maybe, yeah, that's that's probably not. But that just goes to show the fact that like all of that like cognitive work and our perceptions are based on those instincts that we have. Hell it yeah. does, we don't even register it. It's just yeah, happening. It's ju it's mm -hmm. literally just happening. And then we created these we're words. Goddamn for it, computers, dude. Understand. Which it. is why these fucking experiments are great because it pulls that shit out to the forefront that we don't usually apply when we think about everyday life and our decisions and shit. Like what what instinctual things, what primal things are right now are like making every decision for me right now. Mm -hmm. Why am I acting the way I am? And I think you can find things deep down in you, instinctual thoughts or uh i don't know i'm actions. losing my words actions yeah exactly. we had a big Thank you. we had yeah. a big conversation yesterday on like a location yeah you fuckers were i know you're going we in drove my apartment <laughs> until midnight 12. 12. <laughs> talking about some bullshit <laughs> we no, no, dude, it's, the not, end it's of not it, bullshit but you guys literally the end of it was a, to a conclusion yeah. no, no not didn't. at all the not end of it was a very good conversation which is not something we'll talk about but it was a very good conversation at the end of the day but I like the location, just the location part of like just being well to give people born in context now that they know the basis yeah. of it. The argument was about if location matters in who you the, are, who you are, mm -hmm. and the makeup of yourself, which is just a Absolutely. fact. Absolutely, which yeah. is just a fact. Sam's There's no denying and, that. Sam, you, I guess you can lay out your argument because so, you say no. Basically, no, 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 no. I don't say no. I say no in the sense location is a very broad subject to the point. It is something that, like you said, is just very instinctual and it happens. It's a very... It's not sub instinctual. It's a very subconscious thing that you are born in these environments and everybody's sculpted this way. And I always said, even if you're not in a location where this thing is, but it just goes back to Dude, location. No. And Human beings are a product of their environment. And you could boil it down to something as simple as being like... You understand the context of a monument that's next to you, or you could have it be as complex as like the social economic <laughs> like differences between classes and yeah. races. The yeah. social and it's a piece of art. makeup of Upper Arlington versus yeah. Palo. Ohio. And like or I said, everybody yeah. who is else. superior though, power Upper Arlington. Let's settle it now. I it's think Pal. Upper Arlington. Yeah, it's we're like Pal. I don't know. I think Upper Arlington, but that's just me. UA has been on a steady, uh, just a steady like. Plateau. You yeah, you guys plateaued with your with your fucking snob, snob, snob dude, snob snide bullshit, dude. I don't know, dude. Pal is pretty like contemporary, and like you guys are kind of like, you guys are like, uh, you know, we're like the Patriots. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> well, we literally we are the Patriots. We are the Patriots. Bro. Honestly, you're right, dude. Because like, I don't even conceptualize other cities outside of. Like where I grew up exactly. when I was in high school. That I don't literally even, gives I don't even into the point of understand. the location. That's exactly what we're saying. <clears throat> like, and Sam, I got your point last night as well. You were saying like for some people, their location matters less. But it's and I think that's, location. that's sure, like it, without a doubt. My ultimate bottom line point was that it plays a role no yeah. matter what. You can't I mean, escape yeah, the role it plays, that. whether it's very little of a role or you don't even notice it and then for some people it's like that's more what i it makes them who yeah. they are the example was bill gates growing up next to the the, the university of washington which had a uh, state-of-the-art computer lab at the time if bill gates wasn't born or lived and grew up next to that place who knows if he would have ever fucking found out his love for computers if he grew yeah. up in fucking iowa he wouldn't be next to a, a state-of-the-art computer lab at the time in the 1970s. But then maybe he's like, he's holy fu fuck, I'm not around any technology, and that's mm -hmm. what I want to do. Mm -hmm. But why would he have that love if he's not around there that shit in the first place? Because he's watching... I mean, now uh, now it's like getting into... What, because he's watching I was going to say videos? watching yeah. YouTube Jesus videos. Christ. But also, the Sam, that, <laughs> that, absence of, that absence of computers at wherever he's living 
that's a locational factor that's playing into him. Oh, shit, I want to be around computers. Let me lo- now move from this location to a new location. I and think if you were going to have an argument, it would be, okay, if it's not Bill Gates and he lives somewhere else, it would just be another person. Well, that's what I was Instead saying. Is Gates, at some point, it would be and Jeremy. Then, exactly. And then it proves the who fact did I that say? your environment and your location are above all. One of the most important factors in shaping you. And I blew it up. I blew it up even more as in at the end of the day, we're all on the same planet. So like we are technically in the same location in the sense we can go to these other places to get the resources we need in order to become knowledgeable in this. Simplifying and that's still the like, experience. Dude. Still plays and like I was going to say matters. about YouTube is like, I could just sit here. I don't have to travel anywhere. Yeah. yeah this is your, why would this you is do that? Pre 2000, what, six? Oh dude? yeah. But like <laughs> without a doubt, like locationally, like for a different example than Bill Gates, uh, you're a fucking esports gamer superstar. Locationally, that shouldn't really matter where you are. Everybody has access to playing just video games no matter where point. you are. But, but who... The fu- I was talking about it for so fucking long. Okay, we might need to because we will just start repeating. And I ourselves. do not, oh, guys. This has nothing to do with science. <laughs> Straight up, we might as well name the you title of the hear- episode: "Bill Gates Live Next to a Computer Lab." Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is, Fact. dude. I have that's one more science thing. experiment if we want to bring it up. One more, not experiment, but a ex- a like expedition. I guess you could say. Go and for that's it, and then we the, can end there. If the you want. Challenger exploding. In the mm. air, carrying a teacher. More of an event. So this is many so, teachers. And several astronauts. This is heavy. Mad malfunction. The video is one of the most tragic and like gut wrenching things you've ever seen. And to think, one, just watching it nowadays and seeing it not live is gut wrenching. But then imagine all the classrooms across America where a TV was wheeled into the fucking room and you're watching that shit happen live with not even like a thought that that shit could happen. And you see that damn thing explode, bro. I couldn't. What happens? Not only what are happens? you in a classroom watching this, that is your teacher. Mm. That sub, the sub is pushing in the fucking TV for to watch this and, chick get to the moon. And that's why they were like, "You guys got to go home." Hey, uh, immediately uh, let's after, wrap they were this like, up. Get the fuck out. Go. There is people. There. Wa- sorry to interrupt. No, there is good. people watching live too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, that's like what the people literally like teachers did roll in the TVs. You hear that story like people talk about that happening to the kids and don't know nowadays. No, I mean, in there the was TVs. like people in person. Yeah, yeah. And watching oh, it, watching from, it from like the yeah, coast. The, you mean uh, literally like in at, Cape Canaveral. At, yeah, that's Florida, isn't it? Yeah, that is imagine, Florida watching. Okay. Imagine, dude, dude, that would scar you for the rest of your life. Can I you mean, see it's, it though? It's like people watch it. Like it was up so many. Yeah. It was really high up. Saw nine eleven happen too. It's yeah. Like, yeah, that kind of thing. that level of disbelief where we, we were just watching the video prior because Cole actually coincidentally had done a project on this exact event. He did a he, part of the video. Part of his like presentation was the actual video and the commentators or the newscasters at the time to handle that live and not like just say holy fucking <laughs> shit uh, do you see that shit <laughs> do you see what that? the fuck is going <laughs> the composure to be able to like oh. like not exactly call it as it is in the moment in order to preserve a sense of like calmness and what did they say though I'm, I don't I, know. All I know, I heard a lot of empty, blank, Dude, <laughs> blank they, quiet. They handled noise. it much better than when Max Kellerman farted on first <laughs> day. Oh, yeah. I was going to sports right away. The first thing I thought of was like the Kevin Hart reaction. <laughs> Like or not Kevin Hart, Kevin Ware, the dude who broke his oh. leg and like oh Kentucky my game. god, the commentators dude. were like, don't yeah. that's a broken, don't leg. watch, <laughs> that's a broken. I think he uh, might have broken his leg. Or when Gordon Hayward broke his leg on the uh, the first game of like the 2018 season, that the yeah, fucking that's Kevin uh, my Kevin Harlan's like Hayward has broken his leg. He <laughs> broke his leg. Oh. <laughs> But then, where do you? Where's the line? I'm sorry, of like, to, I'm sorry to completely like go off track there. But. Where's the line of you? Somebody saying something and they're just like, "That's an explosion." Like I think it just exploded, and you're like, "Holy fuck, that looks crazy!" And you're just like, "Uh, yeah." People just perished, burnt, dude. So yeah, that's the Challenger explosion. We're gonna end it on that high note. I got can. a scientific fact about it though from my project. Yes, or whatever. yes, lay it on so us. So apparently, the reason that it exploded is that um, I'm not sure about the actual like engineering of a space shuttle, but there's these things called O-rings, 
and there is an engineering flaw where if it was too cold, the O-rings could malfunction. And it was very cold that morning. The um, weather. And the weather kind of blew it for them. Um, Strange. But they yeah. probably had so much pressure to do the launch mm. that day that there was like no going. Oh, oh dude, yeah. Can you imagine yeah. walking in and you're like, you're the guy that's like, sir, um, actually – we're not launching today. It's really cool. Which shows like the political, <laughs> like cool, how man. strong the political pressure or like the PR pressure of the whole entire thing is. Hey, we're going to rush this thing, even though it might not be the best, but we're trying to show that we're on top. We're America. This is 1986, still on the downturn of the Cold War, but still trying to prove that we're on top. So let's fucking do this thing. America. Push the launch, baby. But yeah, unfortunately, things played out the way they did. Shame. That's like kind of comparable to Chernobyl because I'm sure we tried to like downplay it a fuck ton. Uh, no, I'm sure Noble's worse, but I'm saying like that to see that live, dude. That oh, just, I couldn't imagine. I don't know if they were on. I don't know if it was. I'm trying to think, no, they had like news channels covering it, like oh, helicopters yeah. and stuff. I remember that specifically, and they were like, uh, some helicopter tried to like get really close and ended up. Pretty much disintegrating or something. Oh, we're talking about the hell, like the trying to get footage of yeah, Chernobyl, Chernobyl. Oh, and it was gotcha. just radiating and like eating through everything. And but yeah, I don't Dude, know the, the shit that they now. subjected people to in order to stop the or mitigate the damage of Chernobyl. The people like the people digging tunnels underground. The people that they had go into like the the miners. The radio the radioactive yeah. water to go actually shut down the actual uh, power plant itself or the the what do you call it New, the reactor yeah. the um, juices you go through that fucking radioactive water and all you got is a, a rubber suit on it was three Bruh, of them three you dudes. walk into that shit and you just feel your dick just shrink up no, in your were, body permanently there were a ton of first responders that went there and and there is a scene in the series of chernobyl where the guy like tries to pick up a part of the reactor that exploded mm -hmm. and it like immediately tears through mm -hmm. this fucker's hand so the one of them going into the thing crazy it was three specific dudes and they said if they didn't end up doing this it would have been it like 10 times more catastrophic ca like. catastrophic which would have literally fucking evaporated people dude heroes. so good for fucking yeah, them. No, heroes. Legit um, heroes but going to be, they portrayed it pretty well but the miners digging these tunnels underneath actually it was so hot that they had to they were de they were mining naked mm. Because no protection, the, no protection, no. anything at all on them. And they ended up all fucking dying because, I mean, they were course, just fucking... Dude, I hope that was historically accurate, though, because that is, like, the most typical thing of HBO to be, like, you guys have a good idea for a show? Make well, naked. guess what? We're going to show a dick. I think it had... <laughs> I think it was a very general... I think, yeah, I think it had something to end up doing something with I that, mean, what actually fucking happened. Someone produced that Nicolas Cage 9-11 movie. So. What? Oh, of him as a firefighter? <laughs> yeah. And getting trapped under the rubble? That is very historically accurate. That was a though. good so maybe that's fucking a bad movie. description. I do want to say that is, the, the miners getting naked to mine and dig those holes, I think, is true because at the end of the show, they showed a picture of that exact troop of people. Maybe not fully naked, but in their underwear. Or I'm something. pretty sure it's portrayed. Everything was portrayed pretty much what it fucking was. And Obviously, it's dramatized, so there's going to be things that are different without Their a doubt. Their are going to be a little bigger the than facts, usual. The facts, I think they did a good job on yeah. that, at least. Big fan, watch no it. Doubt, dude. Going back, watch it. All right. I might watch it again. Science experiments. Do we have any, right. like, uh, ratings that we want to do? Ooh, do you guys want to do, like, a, a tier, snake draft or tier something? Last. Tier of last. best science things? Um, How about tier, tier list of your favorite scientists. Oh God, dude! Oh. Me. Don't say anyone yet. Don't say don't anybody. Because like, how it many? Be, like, because if you can't think of yeah, one, that's what I'm going to say. If you can't think of one, just think of something like it doesn't. Scientist is a loose definition. I gotta look up. I gotta look up my. You could. You could even like think of artists. Because I would say I would honestly put scientists and artists somewhere in the I'm same. I'm picking category. the alchemist, baby. Like the producer. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude! He's I a scientist. Pick. I might take that first pick. All right. I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I was thinking the same. Are you? Are you? You're literally over there, like writing down real scientists. No, no. I'm writing down snake draft of scientists, and then all of our names. I'm just gonna write down what everybody says. Okay. Who's going first? Ethan, you go first. Tesla. Nikola Tesla. That's who I was gonna pick. Oh, come on, dude. Motherfucker. 
dude created the alternating current was in a fucking goddamn copyright war with fucking Thomas Edison, dude, stealing each other's ideas. Hey, Thomas Edison is on the board. Thomas Edison right. is on the but board. But kind of a Don't bitch. say that. Don't say that. Dude, that is <laughs> such a lame pick if you take Thomas Edison. <laughs> no way i take him. Because you know who I'm taking? I'll take Albert Einstein, dude. Ooh. The goat. How many are we the picking? Fucking goat Not only scientist. a scientist, but the best mathematician to ever live. Yeah, How many are we picking? Guy. How many four are we four, picking? Like, four? Yeah, that's what we've been doing. Bro, I can't name four scientists. Get creative with it. Get creative with it. I'll take the guy who let the president know what's up. Okay, I'm going to take... Um, exactly. Dude, the relativity dog? Relativity. Come on now. His, his fucking theories are holding up today, bro. Fucking his theorized theories. black holes and them shit's real. <laughs> I'm going to take a modern <laughs> renaissance man, one of the most highly debated individuals to this date. Yeah. Elon Musk. Woo! I like it. I mm. like it. That's hot. Elon. <laughs> hot right now. I mean, oh, that boy Elon hot right now. Oh, dude. He in the I got a sleeper. Cyber truck. <laughs> the cyber truck. Sam, Sam, Sam with the, in the cyber truck. No, remember, truck. this is a snake drop, so you have to pick two right now, truck, and then man. it goes back. This is. I'm going to have to say the first one and Let's then go. talk a little bit and That's brainstorm. Fine. This is, dude, I'm actually pumped I did this one. Alan Turing. Alan Turing. Oh, the dude from the imitation game who was able to crack codes yeah. in World War II. For German. Awesome. For Jor he Essentially, this dude, if you've never seen Imitation Game, but that's like kind of where I learned about it, but I also have heard of this man before. Fucking great movie. He would hack um, Benedict Cumberbatch. Great fucking actor. He was this, and this was a huge plot of it, was like he was a homosexual dude living in this time where homosexuality was frowned upon as a scientist mm -hmm. and, and he covered it up for it yeah, yeah he was covered up but it was he's a british mathematician that basically created this device that in real time could crack could this decipher this code that these nazis were sending over oh, benedict cumberbatch mm -hmm. alan turing <laughs> benedict uh, cumberbatch yep number two um, Jesus, dude, tells you how good of a science, how much I know about science. Number two, um, number two. Can I do in, like Steve science Jobs? Yeah, scientist inventor. Sure. Here, I'll put scientist sure. slash invent. That's totally yeah. Steve Jobs definitely. Steve on Jobs. The list. Steve Jobs. Put him on. You know him. Fucking visionary. Goddamn. Change the world. I just I just watched. I will say I watched Keen Peel skit of what's Cook. What's his first name? Tim Cook. Tim Cook. Uh, Keenan was like fucking playing Tim Cook yeah. and he's like make sure you don't go off the script and he gets out and he's like you know what we're gonna do today we're going off the script <laughs> <laughs> and he's like fuck these iPhones fuck Steve Jobs I'm doing what I want <laughs> Tim Cook is the CEO of Apple for those of you who don't now know. yeah now but Steve Jobs, rest in peace. Hell yeah, dude. Heard he was a big dick. Washed his <laughs> fucking feet in the toilet. Wore the same jeans everywhere. Ashton Kutcher. The Aaron Sorkin son. Steve Jobs movie. Yeah, him and Ashton Kutcher, <laughs> one and the same. Yeah. Dude, yeah. the Aaron Sorkin Steve Jobs movie, miles better than the Ashton That's the Michael Kutcher. Fassbender one. Oh, Michael 100%. Yeah. 100%. Better than the fucking one where uh, Ashton Kutcher's playing his ass. Yo, is it my pick? Yeah, yeah. it's your pick. All right, I got a tier zero guy. Let's go. Isaac Newton. Oh! Hot. Hot, hot, hot. He's still hot right now. <laughs> He's hot, dude. Them fucking laws of goddamn... What is it? His three laws of what? Gra Motion? Gravity, right? Laws it's of motion. It's Newton's laws, bro. Dude. Whatever they We got inertia be. in that shit. My I, favorite one is equal but, equal but opposite reaction. Like anything that you yeah. push on will push back at you. That's, That's just that a know, thing you honestly. can apply. It's a life like, lesson. Yeah, you location, location, location. Yeah. Push, pull, my location. Up? Is it my turn? Yeah, your yeah. turn, Drew. I will go Nicholas Copernicus, dog. Oh. I thought you were going to say Nicholas Cage, Single, oh, oh, oh. Single handedly <laughs> pissed off a shit ton of people. Mm -hmm. By telling him the Earth was not the center of the universe, oh. it was the goddamn sun. Yeah. He, the, dude, politicians wanted this motherfucker murdered because mm. he was he was just right. He knew what was up Another way before anyone else, dude. The sun, mm. the sun's controlling our lives. We're the what? Third or fourth? We're third. the sun. Oh, God. It's I think planets. we're the third. I believe we're the third. I could be wrong, but that I'm going to... That sounds right. I feel we like in that Goldilocks right. spot. I'm hitting three though. or four... But yeah, we're in that nice little sweet spot. Hell yeah. 
Um, Copernicus is a good one. That's a good one, dude. I would have never thought of him. Astronomer. In, oh, my God. I'm going to bring back a fucking legend, baby. Billy fucking Mays. The goddamn <laughs> ShamWow <laughs> and Flex Seal, baby. You heard of him. What? He's At, not the Flex Seal which guy, one, he? Was sham, what was he, ShamWow then? He Bobby was just a Billy Mays an infomercial guy. Billy Mays was, was um, he a scientist. He dude? fucking invented that shit, man. Oh, yo, he had <laughs> infomercials down to a science. Hell yeah, yeah. He's in my fucking draft. <laughs> I don't think he had one specific invention. I think he just I got to look him up. Sell. Uh, I thought it was sell stuff. Well, one second. Billy, how do you even spell his fucking name? M-A-Y-E-S. And then he tragically died in that year where all the those same celebrities day, died. It was the same day as Michael <laughs> well, I have Jackson. A good, I have a two. good one. There was like a week where it was like oh. Michael Jackson, Billy Mays, yeah. and uh, Fair Fawcett. Fair Fawcett. What a week, dude. He, I was doing basketball tryouts in seventh grade when that shit happened. Billy Mays would push yeah, oxy. That was the time I did make it. I did not make it the next year. That's right. Donnie he was an took my spot. Fuck you, Donnie. <laughs> Fucking worked on your jump shot with a shooting coach, asshole. Ooh, dude. Shooting coach, though? I mean, that's how you get better. I know. I didn't do... I didn't take the steps necessary like he did. So I listed the wrong things that he fucking uh, invented. I'm saying he invented them. He pushed OxyClean, Orange Glow, Kaboom, and Zorbies. He invented all those things. All of those things. And my third kind of goes along the same vein as Copernicus as Galileo, saying that, yo, we ain't the fucking center of this shit. Took on the Catholic Church, took on imprisonment, all because he knew he was fucking right in the name of science. Big time guy. Who? I literally thought you were talking about Billy Mays. I was like, did Billy Mays really defy all odds against. I mean, he did. (laughs) <laughs> Billy Mays defied all odds. <laughs> the Flex Seal guy is different. Stuff yeah. written down? Okay, cool. The Flex Seal guy is different, right? Three, it's not the same guy. I'm up for three. This is going to be... He's a half... He he was autistic. Let's put that out there first. Definitely autistic. Leonardo da Vinci, dude. Oh. A legend in the... In da the Vinci? Painting field and a legend in... The uh, invention field. First, he was an inventor. Motherfucker had blueprints for a plane. Mm-hmm. Have you in seen the 1600s, dude, dude? He's got some crazy inventions. Assassin's Creed, the entire video game, should just be one credit, and it's mm. to him, pretty much, dude. But he's he, he's a goddamn legend, dude. Absolutely. He created the golden ratio. I'm pretty sure. And he also dug up dead bodies in the name of anatomy and being able to <laughs> open up. Fucking dead people and be able to say, yo, that's where the heart is. Could just he would go into graveyards and illegally do that shit. Putting science on his goddamn back. Fuck yeah. Damn straight, dude. That's my third pick. Yeah. Get out of here. Alright, my third pick. Big <laughs> Billy fucking me. <laughs> oh, Wait, no. did he create OxyClean? In my mind he did. Dude, there's no okay. way Billy Mays created any of those things. He created uh the idea of them in my mind. He might have yeah. been on Oxy while yeah, cleaning. I was gonna Hell say yeah. I thought you were gonna say Billy Mays was pushing Oxy. <laughs> Through his product. He probably was. All right, but Shout out Billy Mays, pick, RIP. My third pick, this one is huge. The most famous primate scientist of all time, Ooh. Jane Goodall. Yes, sir. Nice. That brings what back a gem. Some good what lady. a beauty. We love you, Jane. Was she Thank monkeys you, and gorillas or strictly one primates. or the other? All primates. All gorillas. primates. Yeah, okay. What a queen, dude. Is she gone? I don't think so. I think Jane Goodall is still around. Hmm. Interesting. That would have been one of those things where it's like um, the assassination of JFK, Michael Jackson dying, Kobe Bryant, and Jane Goodall. That's like my oh, more dude. of like. <laughs> I might cry if she You knew she where you were when those things happened. Amelia Earhart, I remember where I was. She's still out there, dude. She's still out there for There's a great documentary for Amelia Earhart, like finding Amelia Earhart. The same dude who found the Titanic uh, set out to try and find the remnants of Amelia Earhart's crash, and they might have located her. He's just island. finding everything, dude. It's dude. a fucking G. Um, Are we three and four now? Uh, three and four. Yeah, so you'll be yeah saying three and four. Mike Lindell. He's the my pillow guy, the crackhead oh. turned billionaire. Um, if you want to read about him, dude, he's a pretty pretty good story. He was like good pillow. He was like a crackhead at the age of forty, like a fully functioning crackhead, and he said, "Where can I lay my cracked head out on at night, dude?" And he said, "Pillow." But I don't know if that's a true story. But Mike Lindell and um. 
I didn't prepare for a fourth. You're good. It'll come to you. Um, let's do, uh, uh, shit. Think of someone who's like on the edge. Shit. Like someone who maybe isn't a scientist, but he is a scientist. Mm-hmm. Like Tony Hawk. <laughs> Billy Mays. Billy Mays, dude. I'm rifling through as many people as I know in my head. Um, I'm thinking way too hard. Somebody else goes, so there's not empty space. No, dude, it's you. It's snake I can't. Drive. I'm trying to think. What's something you use day to day? Think on of a day any basis? person. Um, here I'll look up. I'll just look up the name of something I'm thinking. Neil of right Diamond, now. the inventor of the diamond. <laughs> <laughs> Neil. Neil Diamond. Um, something I use in my everyday life. All right. Joseph Gaiety. G-A-Y-E-T-T-Y. What did what he do? do? The inventor of toilet paper, which I need to go get you some today. You don't even have any Dude, right the now. inventor of the toilets, like the actual toilet's last name was Crapper, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> 100%. He was a part I of almost it. looked up that one, but toilet paper, everybody uses toilet paper. Shout out to Tushy. Just kidding. Shout out, Tushy, baby. <laughs> Give me one. My last one, I really wanted to pick, like, a real scientist, like a legitimate person that exists in the realm of reality. <laughs> real <laughs> reality. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I got to give a shout out to the king of literature scientist, Dr. Frankenstein. Oh, let's go. Making that monster, boy. Shout out Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Taking you back to senior year English right quick. I like that. Drink a Stein with Frankenstein, dude. Yeah. (laughs) I like that pick. Frankenstein, dude. I also wanted to do a a legit scientist for this last pick, but I couldn't keep my mind off of something else. And that is the animal realm. So I'm going to go with a tie between Steve Irwin. You can't pick two. And Coyote Peterson. Oh! oh! Pick one, pick one, pick one. Can pick I one. sub oh, out? So hard Can I sub out the extra no, for no, mine? No, no, no way. way. <laughs> this was my idea. <laughs> I want one. I want Steve. No, dude. Okay, so the, the dilemma comes because obviously Steve's the legend. Oi! Crikey! He's, he's, killing, he's wrestling gators out there. But Coyote Peterson is literally doing science with his series where he gets those fucking things that sting him in the arm. Couldn't do it. And he shows the reaction. So for the for the bottom line of the question, I'm going to go Coyote Peterson. Oh, I and, like that. And I will say Steve before, Irwin for the boys. But Steve Irwin, dude, Steve I love Irwin's you. still on the board. Fun, will I snatch him? <laughs> fun fact about Steve Irwin, if he didn't like pull the stingray out, he would still probably be living today. Oh, are you a That's stingrayologist? A no, nah, it's just some fact from some fucking lady who he pulled the barb out. If don't you speak, if she if she left it in, on Steve no, I'm saying if you left it in and got like medical procedure done, he would still be living. But the fact that he ripped it out is why he's dead. Yeah, that's a bummer, dude. Yeah, that but sucks. You live and you learn. Still alive though. He's True. Still getting, he's still stinging himself with these fucking hornets that are three feet wide. <laughs> he's so. unreal. It doesn't make dude. I, the the pain he goes through. There's some scale that that's what he. There's some scientific the reasoning beside it, behind it. Yeah. But yeah. Dude. Okay. So the, for the final pick, I wanted to get some somebody that everybody fucking knows. This guy. He's the legend. The G. The Godfather of this shit. And that's the caveman who discovered fire for the first time. <laughs> Do you know his name? <laughs> the caveman, caveman who discovered guy. fire for the first time. I think Just it's right, caveman. Uh, 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 oh yeah. I, I think it's a caveman. fire guy. <laughs> yeah, that was his name. <laughs> fire that was his nickname around uh, their village. They called him Fire Guy. Yeah. Fireman. Yeah. Honorable mention: Robert Oppenheimer, though. Making that go. bomb. You but you decided with mention? the caveman. Mention. Yeah, everybody gets an honorable mention. Ooh, honorable mention. Didn't have this prepared. Let me think for a I second. I pick Coyote Peterson and Steve Irwin. Oh, shit. <laughs> Just kidding. Man, I don't know who it was, but the guy who made the Scantron. Legend. <laughs> Scantron guy. How the fuck did you single-handedly standardize tests that way, you fool? Dude, my honorable mention is from... Earlier in the in the pod, Boris Morikov, hey. <laughs> my my favorite Russian cosmonaut, absolute G. 
He's a legend. Died in 2015. R.I.P. Boris. Mm. I'll just put it into the universe. I'll manifest it. But we've talked about him quite a bit. We want to have him on. But the expert of chugging liquids. Badlands. Badlands. Badlands chug. We fucking love you, Badlands. We got to get him on the I wanna... Sean Evans is a scientist, too, in my <laughs> Oh, God damn. For without sure. Without a doubt. There's so many people that we could have picked. But Badlands, dude, we need to have them and all. all but of them are legit scientists. I like our rosters. I can run through them for each of us real quick and what we decide. We'll post a little picture, we, dude. Yeah, we'll put them up. Uh, Sam with Alan Turing, Steve Jobs, Mike Lindell, Joseph Gaiety, and Badlands Chug. <laughs> uh, Cole gets Elon Musk, Isaac Newton, Jane Goodall, and Dr. Frankenstein with that honorable mention of our boy Boris. That's a high point. Drew with Albert Einstein, with which is... Honestly, should have been one one overall. Like, no, uh, that's definitely top yeah. overall. Fuck seed. Einstein, yeah, number one seed without a doubt. Uh, All my boys, Copernicus, Einstein. Da Vinci, Coyote, Peterson, and then the dude who invented the Scantron. <laughs> and then myself, I have Nikola Tesla, Billy Mays, who is definitely a scientist slash inventor without a doubt. You can't prove me wrong there. <laughs> Galileo and the caveman who discovered fire, and then honorable mention Robert Oppenheimer, who became death the day he invented the nuclear bomb. You decide wow. who has the best lineup. We'll post pictures and stuff. Hey, I like that so. Big bummer too. Nobody said secret word of the day. Oh, what was it? It was magnet. Oh shit! Let you let just said know. it. Okay, so how no, about that's this? That's not how that works. <laughs> how about if last no one week says I... it? We all, all four of us, donate a dollar to the charity. I thought okay. we couldn't do a dollar. Yeah. So last week I donated five dollars. Oh, I accidentally actually donated ten dollars because I did it twice. Um, but I donated ten dollars to the Did American you ask for your Cancer money back? Society. Yeah, I hit up my plug at the American <laughs> Cancer Society and asked. Hey, for I'm gonna need guys. that ten back, guy. So how about we do Ask Cancer again? Five each. Five, Five each, each. I was gonna had, say. I was gonna say now. two each, and then that's six dollars like or eight dollars total. It makes sense with the topic. Yeah. What do we? What do you say? What do we want? The do? word is magnet. We want to do is like there a science. A yeah, is there a magnet based charity? <laughs> is there like a Columbus donate? Magnet Association that Let's we donate to COSA? I donate. To yeah, COSA, in the I name of sure. science, we'll donate twenty dollars to COSA. To COSA. Right. Hell yeah! Let's, Let's, I like that. Let's just get a giant check that says to science. To science. And for just, 20 bucks, <laughs> giant <laughs> check handed to COSA. <laughs> Dude, that's a photo op we need. We'll, we'll be posting. The stubs of our donations, just so you guys know that we aren't blowing smoke out our ass. But this, this proof for Kosai <laughs> is in the form of a giant check with all of us shaking hands with whoever with Kosai guy. Yes, with Mister Kosai. Yeah, but I hope everybody enjoyed this shit. Episode, Episode 10, ten, dude. And Glad also remember, here. fucking science isn't real, guys. Just remember that. Yeah. Thanks and, for tuning in. And your fuck co- all of you. Guys. And your location doesn't matter. That's w- bullshit. Fuck you. We're all physical beings on the same realm, so... Knowledge is power.